call to order the meeting of the Common Council for February 1st, 2022. Clerk? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. 12 members are present and voting, and 12 members are present in the chambers or at home. Very good. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation led by a guest of uh, Alder Burnett. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, and to the Republic for which is one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Alder Burnett? Thank you, uh, Mayor. I want to introduce Pastor Ku Lee. Pastor Lee is the pastor at Pilgrim Lutheran's Hmong service position he's held. Am I getting a bit of feedback here? A position he held since 2008. He's been a member of the Pilgrim Lutheran family since 1976 when he arrived in Green Bay. He was an employee of Wisconsin Public Service for 35 years, which he retired from in June 2019, and he resides within the city of Green Bay. Pastor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, and thank you for all the uh, council members that are here. I'm very honored to be here. And let's uh, join together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty, Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, you for this day as we gather here for the City of Green Bay Council meeting. We're asking for your guidance your wisdom and your support as we begin this meeting. Help to engage in every each individual of the city council member is a meaningful discussion and guide all the city council member to grow closer as a group and to nurture the board uh, and bond of the, our community. Give them your uh, grace that they may effectively do their part as a public servant, bless their plan and project for you, great glory. All this we ask and pray in your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you all. <laughs> uh, to approve all the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded, Seconded by Alder Gerlach. Oh. That is to approve the minutes from the January 12th and January 18 meetings. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those minutes have been approved. On to approval of the agenda. Approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the agenda has been adopted. Report by the mayor. Um, just a couple of comments on two items that we have before us this evening. Um, one on the request to allocate uh, some of those ARPA dollars towards green infrastructure projects. I know we had a, a lengthy discussion at the Finance Committee um, as a result. Uh, city staff, including Melissa Schmidt, Steve Grenier, and Matt Heckenleibel, uh, I think did a really nice job providing a memo to city council. So hope all of you had a chance to to read through that. Um, you know, this is now at this point a long-standing, pretty public commitment um, to supplementing the great infrastructure that we have in the city in the in the stormwater utility with green infrastructure. Um, and uh, in addition to that. Uh, this will allow us to free up some resources within the stormwater utility to allow for enhancements to be made on the property of businesses and citizens uh, throughout the city. Uh, I think we all understand that, um, that these flooding issues are significant uh, and real, and the best way for us to address them is a multi-pronged approach with a lot of those you know, traditional great infrastructure projects, but supplementing them um, with some of these new innovations 
both with large scale green infrastructure projects, but as I said, with some of these citizen led and business led initiatives. Um, so hoping that we'll be able to move forward with that request, recognizing um, the innovative <coughs> approach that's been offered by city staff and uh, the real needs that we have in the community. Um, also looking forward to a good discussion on our capital improvement plan. Um, not looking for action on the part of council this evening, really just a kind of a continuation of the discussion, the robust discussion that took place at our finance committee. I think like like everybody, I saw the number um, and, uh, and you know felt like it was a little bit eye popping, um, but I think we all have to have a well-informed discussion of where that number came from and and really it, it derived here city council and myself have asked city staff to be clear and objective in the request that they put forward recognizing the infrastructural needs that we have and it's our responsibility as policymakers to respond to that in an appropriate way recognizing the fiscal limitations that we operate um, under so uh, so I'm thankful to all of our departments for putting forward that document. Um, Director Grenier and Director Ellen Becker spent a lot of time in particular, um, you know, working through that and we'll continue to have those discussions and, and have them again at, at the Finance Committee and then our following council meeting. Um, but just asking people to, uh, to recognize what we've asked of, of our staff and I think they've done a nice job in, in bringing that forward. Um, now it's our role to play in, in directing that. So with that, we'll move along to uh, I don't believe we have any recognitions and awards this evening. So on to appointments. Oh, my mistake. Announcements from council. Alderdorf. Thank you. Um, the United Way of Brown County is doing an LBGTQ plus equity challenge for nine weeks. Um, taking the challenge, if you choose to take that, will provide resources and education to you and you'll increase your overall understanding of the LBGTQ plus community. It's an educational opportunity designed for everyone. And the LGBTQ plus equity challenge runs from March 14th through, through May 9th. It is free, registration is required, and it can be completed at the program website, which is LBGTQ plus challenge, all one word, and the plus is a plus sign. So LBGTQ plus challenge at browncountyunitedway.org or just go to the Brown County United Way website and it pops up first thing when you get on that page. So I, I've already signed up for the challenge and I encourage you all to do the same. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Other announcements? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, last week a dear friend of mine um, lost her son to addiction and I think it's a, a reminder about this, this problem that continues to persist not only within our community, but through the state in our country. And you know, the, f the first thing that I wanna recognize, acknowledge of course, are, are those folks on the front line that, that work on this issue every day, our first responders, our healthcare professionals. Um, you think of organizations like Darjun and the impact that they're having, our drug task force. And I think it's important to recognize that, that no one is immune um, from this issue. And oftentimes I think we, we kind of brush it off and say, oh, this only affects certain types of people that aren't like me. And, and the fact is, it's not true. It's, it affects everybody in our community. And I think we really need to start driving community conversations around this issue because it is an absolute pandemic and it is happening more frequently and more often, I think, than we care to discuss. And, it, you know, we need to find ways to fund, obviously, treatment. We need to find ways to deter um, situations that, that get people there in the first place. Uh, I believe our state officials need to demonstrate some courage. Uh, we need to stop imprisoning addicts. And we need to treat them. And I think it's time that we also have um, conversations in earnest about the merits of, of legalization of other products that uh, really don't contribute to a problem and quite frankly when you have the ability to regulate them uh, can have a much more positive effect on, on this situation that we currently are facing as a community so um, obviously this issue just happened to hit me closely because a dear friend was impacted by it but 
I assure you that everyone in this room probably uh, is being impacted by it, whether they know it or not. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to obviously express my condolences uh, to the family of Sandra Rank, um, but also uh, recognize that we all need to be a part of the solution. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alder, for those comments. And sorry for, for your loss, for Sandra's loss. And we certainly extend our condolences from the city to her family. Other comments from council? Announcements? Seeing none, we will move along to uh, reappointments. Motion. Motion has been made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell, to approve our two reappointments. Any discussion? Alder Scannell? Just a quick uh, shout out to uh, Roger. He's been on the Transit Commission longer than I have, so uh, and he's a great uh, I'm glad he's sticking with it. So uh, welcome back, Roger. Great. Thanks, Alder. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And those individuals are reappointed. Ordinance is second reading for adoption. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? We will use the board. Just give me one moment. Okay, thank you, Alders. You may vote. And Okay, thank you. Here's your displayed vote. Oh, sorry, that is the wrong screen. Excuse me. No problem. All right, and that ordinance is adopted unanimously, 12 0. On to the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that report has been adopted. Improvement in services. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any items here to be handled separately? Uh, number two. Yeah, so. Item two will be handled separately. Others? All right. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Made by Alder seconded by Alder Johnson. That item was pulled by Alder Brunette. Thank you. I apologize. I <clears throat> looking. I have too many windows open, so I couldn't quickly get to the one. But in regards to the Pazer report, the street ratings that Director Grenier created, I had a, a concerned citizen. I actually had a good idea, and I I, I kind of thought of this in regards to the twelfth district. But I think it would be beneficial to the whole city. We have the paper form of the Pazer report. And that's very helpful so citizens can review that based on this meeting if they look at the minutes but an additional measure for understanding just how good or poor our roads are as an aggregate this person mentioned the idea of why don't we put that on a spreadsheet I'm sure it already is in a spreadsheet but make that um, searchable uh, either the city website or some sort of format so citizens can look and then also would it be interesting is each alder had access to their specific district and perhaps broken down and also add up the, the the score for each and every road throughout the city and then divide it by the number of roads that way year after year we'll be able to see how we're progressing not just in the mo linear miles of roads completed or improved but the average score so for example if the average score of roads in the city of green bay's you know 5.2 and then 2000 
you know, 23 or 24, it goes up to 6.2, or I mean, that's a pretty drastic increase, but at least we see some progress. So long statement, but quick question, Director Grenier, is that possible? Have you looked into that idea? Uh, nobody has requested that, so we haven't looked into it. Uh, to provide information <clears throat> on the city website and make it a searchable uh, database, I think would be relatively easy to do, uh, to come up with some sort of an averaging metric. Uh, I might suggest that rather than divide by the number of streets, you divide by the length of the street segment to give it proper weighting. Uh, but that's a detail you and I can discuss offline if you would like to. In general, what you're asking for, I think, is achievable. The only problem that I see um, is we, the, the database we track uh, the road segments in is not separated uh, by Aldermanic District. Uh, so I think having something by Aldermanic District might be a little bit problematic, uh, but we may be able to overcome that as well. Uh, it just it, it wouldn't be something we could do quickly sure and, and just to interject real quickly you know one discussion that we have had internally with director Grenier and in the past with director Veronic um, is putting the the map of, uh, of all the ratings on on the website um, so I would imagine director Veronic could could chime in maybe to confirm that that would be a possibility and also and you know if, if that's the case then you have the aldermanic maps that can be that can be placed on there <coughs> If only government could be this easy all the time. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea, and, and I, I really am happy with Director Grenier, you know, creating this document. It's very helpful, and it's just a way for us to, you know, track the progress of the roads moving forward. So I'll I'll kind of have this discussion with Director Grenier, the Mayor, uh, Mr. Ronick, and if we gotta, you know, take any formal action as a council, we'll I'll, I'll bring something forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Dur or, um, Alder Stoyer. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd also be willing to work on that as well. I've been involved with the PISA report over the last number of years, and uh, I did put some things into aldermanic districts. It took a little while, but I'm willing to look at that and work with uh, whoever on this, with Director Grenier, uh, Alder Burnett, and whoever, but I, I'd be willing to do that. And I think it would be a very important document, not only for council, but also for the citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And the re report has been approved. Protection and policy. Approved. Motion to approve, made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. Items here to be handled separately. Six. Number six. Any others? Item six will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item six. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Weary. Your wishes on item six. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alder Scannell. Uh, I have some item, uh, some things I'd like to say about this, but before I get into that, I'd like to uh, make a motion to open the floor. There are interested parties here. I think we could hear from them first. So a motion to open the floor. Alder Scannell makes a motion to open the floor. It was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The floor is open. So if we have citizens here who would like to provide some testimony. Please approach the, the podium and just state your name and address for us. Hi, my name is Melissa Pigero. My address is 2491 Bittersweet Ave. Great. Um, I am here with my partner, Joanna Albert. Um, we own MJ Hospitality. Um, we're here, and also my husband, Ricardo Piguero. Um, we are here for our first time here with the city for um, a liquor license approval. Um, we're hoping to open um, 708 Bodart Street, and we can answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Great. Thanks so much for being here, ma'am. Questions from council? Alder Galvin. Do you own this this building or are you leasing it? Leasing. Okay. When you uh, got the lease, did you know there was a moratorium? No, we had no clue about the moratorium until the committee meeting last week. So the the owner of the building, did he know you planned on opening a tavern there? Yes. And he didn't make you aware of the moratorium. 
Is there any way out of the lease for you if this doesn't work? It's contingent on this liquor license. All right, thank you very much. Contingent. <laughs> any other questions? Alder Vanderleest. Yes, thank you. Uh, at our committee, we talked about uh, this bar was uh, in operation before. Uh, I think the, the previous tenant got removed from the premise of operating it, and, and I think you're looking to take over the, the premise as a new, ap as a new uh, applicant as far as running the bar and opening the bar back up. Yes. And it, it's, that was what we talked about at our committee and uh, I know there was some 60-day lag, I think, as far as uh, that wasn't, in other words, it, you had a 60-day window, but evidently you didn't lease the property until February 1st, is that correct? Yes. And I, I think there might have been some, you know, breakdown as far as communication that they wanted to open this business, that the previous uh, person was removed from, the, from operating it, and uh, I, I think that the person that owns the building had to find a new t person to operate it, and, and they are applying for the liquor license. And, and it was a previous uh, going bar at, the, at at that point, and it just a matter of changing ownership. And you know, I, we we talked about uh, you know I, I know they have the moratorium. I think a lot of these moratoriums that are, they, they have an effect. Some of them are outdated. You know, as, as far as the police. Uh, you know, calls as far as problem areas. We, we don't seem like we got a lot of problem areas down on Broadway anymore. You know, I, I think 15 or 20 years ago, it was, you know, everyday occurrence or every week occurrence. So I, I think that we should kind of take a look at, you know, having them, you know, get a little bit more time and, and give them a chance to open this facility. Uh, that would be my thoughts on it and, uh, you know, give them a chance to, you know, we, the city of Green Bay wants to partner with new businesses and, and uh, I feel that everybody should have a chance if they're gonna open up a business that, you know, that the city would try to help them. And, and that's my, my thoughts and, and at the committee as well. But the moratorium part of it kind of plays into the factor of, can we move forward in, in granting them their license? So as far as I'm concerned about the moratoriums, uh, I'm not against bars opening up, you know, it's, you know, it's business as in, uh, you know, just a form of business, and so that, that's that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Story, a question for our guest? Uh, yes. Um, I think one of the problems that we had at committee, and I'll just talk to her about that, we couldn't hear her very well. So I, I'm hoping that we can hear her better today. That was a poor communication, so we had a hard time delineating some things. So I, I guess the question I had uh, of the applicant is um, the landlord? The landlord did not make you didn't make you aware of the 60-day window. That, that's what it sounds like, and maybe he was unaware of it as well. So I think it was a bit of a communication breakdown. Uh, my understanding. Well, I'm just wondering if that's it. Did, did the landlord? Did you feel like the landlord did not give you the proper information? Not about the moratorium. You have to talk up. Not about the moratorium. The landlord didn't mention anything, and nobody did until the committee meeting last week. Can you hear well, me? Well, not just the more, not just the moratorium, but the sixty-day window no, that you had. No, no, we weren't informed of that. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have for her right now. Okay, thanks, Alder. Another question from Alder Scannell. Um, when you were uh, looking into starting this business, did COVID play a role in, in the time frame of you opening your business? Yes, we um, lived on Cherry Street for a while and we looked at this business a couple years ago, but then COVID started so we backed off because everything was shut down and it wasn't a good opportunity. But now that things have settled down a little bit, we're, we're hoping to start up again and, and um, be part of the new expansions that are happening downtown. And could you give us a little information about your your uh, background in the area and, and, and why you're interested in, in developing the area there? I can take that on if you want. Yeah. Thanks. Um, it's and a two-part You just want to... I'm sorry? One? Sure. And then if you'd like to speak, just say your name and address. 
Sure. Well, my background in the area is um, I am a nurse, and I was in psych nursing for a long time. I know that area has um, the homeless shelter down there and alcohol and abuse abuse going on, and I, I, I can answer questions and help people with that information. Um, we lived on Cherry Street for five years. Um, we loved it down there. Um, we like the area. We know um, new things are happening. Um, my husband also worked at the homeless shelter for a while, um, I think three years, four years. Um, so he knows the people and who to look for and when, where they're coming from. Um, so. Would you like to say anything? Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Any other members of the public like to say anything? Or? Sure. My name is Joanna Alberts. I am the other partner of MJ Hospitality, uh, 1024 Goodell Street. Um, there's a lot of really great things that are going on in that area that we have equal parts of interest in. Obviously, the real estate of that area is a bar. It's never been a restaurant. It's not designed to be anything other than that. While we weren't necessarily informed of the moratorium and the rules that were instated, I, at this juncture, I'm not sure that the landlord was either. So it's a two-part communication issue, which Alderman Vanderlees has addressed. Um, and at the end of the day, we're very aware of that area, what it needs, how the development is going, the potential for it. Um, but we're also independent business owners who made it through COVID pretty well. So we aren't going into this as a fledgling business that doesn't understand that there are budgeting issues, there are fiscal issues that come along with you know, starting a new business. Um, like I said, we are business owners already. So we're fortunate enough to come to the table you know, with a budget that was predestined for us to be able to spend to better our community and our own livelihoods. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions from Ms. Albers? Motion to close the floor, made by Alder Dorf, seconded by oh, Alder Dorf. Wait, 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 there's more to. Oh. Oh. Mr. Merkis, come on up. Good evening, members of the City Council. Jeff Merkis, I'm Executive Director of Old Main Street Incorporated, 130 East Walnut Street in Green Bay. Um, I just wanted to um, share with you that I've had an opportunity to uh, review the plan. I am aware that the Green Bay Police Department has reviewed their security plan and is comfortable. Um, we are dealing with a responsible property owner, and there may have been some um, naivete or uh, uncertainty about, uh, uh, about the moratorium um, and the 60-day rule. However, this really doesn't apply to the applicant. Uh, th these are new business operators that want to open a business in our community. Um, from what I could gather uh, regarding their background, these are long-term citizens of our community, uh, held uh, responsible positions. Uh, this is a property that's located in the old Main Street District, um, and we have a very responsible property owner as well. This building is set up for hospitality. That is the best use of this space. Um, it has been vacant for the past six plus months, and we would like to see an opportunity for business. Uh, I can assure you that um, my team and I, this is a business we want to support. We want to welcome them to the district. Um, we want to help keep them accountable to run a good establishment. And, um, and I have a, a, every level of confidence that, uh, that they're very capable of doing that. So um, I, I realize there are some complexities. I uh, appreciate the work of a number of the alders that have been digging into this and, and working with our staff. Uh, but I would like to offer my um, support and encourage you to support the approval of the liquor license. And I'm confident that we'll have a quality business on Bodart Street. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. I believe uh, Don Melby would like to speak. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Melby, go ahead. Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. <clears throat> uh, uh, Don Melby, 840 South Broadway. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Don, president of the Brown County Tavern League. I'm here to speak on behalf of them. Uh, they stopped and talked to me while applying at this location uh, for a license. I've already known of uh, Ricardo. He's been a successful tap cleaning service in town for, for quite a long time. Uh, he's been in the industry. Uh, he knows a lot of responsible bar owners in the area. I've heard of nothing but good things about his character. Um, I think this would be a good business in addition to the area with responsibility given to the opportunity 
to contribute positively towards our community. I just ask you all make a motion to reverse the moratorium for this instance, and, and that's it. I thank you guys for your time. Thanks for your testimony. Any other comments, either online or in person? All right. Motion to close the floor. Okay. okay. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. aye. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Uh, just to clarify the motion real quick with Alder Scannell, uh, it was a motion to approve the application? Yes. Okay. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Mayor. So I agree with um, a lot of what Alder Vanderlee said. I believe that the moratorium had its place. Um, I, if you noticed that you did get a copy of the moratorium in your email, I had spoke with um, the Clerk Jeffries and she sent that moratorium out to all of us to look at. And at some point in the near future, I'd like us to take a look at that in protection and policy and see if we maybe want to revise that. Um, but it's, it's the way it is right now. In my, my belief is that when I was on protection policy, our role was to look at the law, to look at what police recommended, to look at what our staff recommended, but then it was up to us on protection policy to make a, a decision. And if it was within the spirit of the law, and I, and I believe this one is, then if I were on protection policy today, I would be voting yes to approve this application. And so I will be voting yes to approve this application. I think there's some good reasons to do that. We've heard them all tonight. So um, thank you. That's all I have to say on that right now. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary and then Alder Gerlach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I watched the meeting. And I have uh, come to the conclusion I, you know, it's replacing an existing bar you know, these have been stated before. We have extra liquor licenses. The application, the applicants have a solid background. We've heard from the director of uh, Old Main in, in downtown. Uh, they're in favor. The, the police department has no concerns. So I have no problem supporting the new business and, and overriding the moratorium. So thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach? Just a question because here we go again. This is the first time I've ever faced a moratorium. Um, is there any reason that we cannot approve this license because of the moratorium? No, but I'll, uh, I'll have uh, Attorney Bungert weigh in just on the, on the force of the moratorium and, and how it sits in our, in our law. Yeah, so this particular moratorium is set by resolution. Um, we do, I believe, have one, if not two, moratoriums that are set by ordinance. Um, and those are not discretionary, those, those we cannot set aside. Um, but ones that are set by resolution are not um, compulsory. So it, essentially a resolution just sets forth um, an adopted collective um, agreement of, of the council to have certain parameters set with respect to issuing liquor licenses within, within a certain area um, and setting forth certain conditions. So certainly it's, it's up to the discretion of, of council whether they want to continue following a resolution um, for one particular item or whether, you know, a resolution needs to be repealed and replaced with something else. But um, there is no, um, it, the council isn't bound to the terms of its own resolution. And, and then a question about, um, I don't quite understand the way this is worded. So um, it, the committee is recommending that we deny an application so when Alder Scannell moves to approve, is he moving to approve the application or is he moving to approve the denial? I just have to know yeah, what. I, I did clarify that with him. So he is, okay. his motion was to approve the application. Okay, so, okay, thank you. Yep. Other questions? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I fully support the approval of this application as well. Um, you know, I, I remember a conversation Alder Scannell and I had leading up to this meeting and you know, we talked about how obviously the right, you know, we're just trying to, the, the committee was more or less trying to make a decision within the confines of the law, the law being the resolution. Uh, but I would just remind council that, that we make the law and, and we can do that today uh, by, by simply approving this application. Um, you know, we've approved these uh, several times in my, my tenure here on council. Uh, this is the first time actually I can recall us having any lengthy conversation about it um, for, for whatever reason. Um, so I think at the end of the day, what we have here is a, is a technicality. 
that technicality being um, you know, the, the previous license wasn't handled within that 60 day period. In fact, there's a provision within the moratorium that they can make or issue an appeal to extend that 60 days. I'd rather not make them go through that process. Let's just handle this today. Let's take care of it. Um, I, I think, you know, you have a, a sound proposal here with, with experienced business owners. And I just hope that we can discontinue this practice of, of denying um, licenses or, or, or other requests related to alcohol uh, simply because we've viewed clickbait claims that um, Green Bay is this or Green Bay is that. I, I hope we're beyond that uh, and that we're, we talk about science all the time. Let's make these decisions rooted in science. And what we have in front of us right now is a business owner uh, who wants to, to operate in the city of Green Bay. And we have a vacant property that, quite frankly, is built for this purpose. And if we don't approve this license, it will remain vacant. Which would we rather have? I'll take an operational business. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. <clears throat> yes, I, I uh, agree with Alder Johnson there that you know the business is, the building is made for this business, and uh, uh, that's the only kind of business you're going to have there unless you knock the building down or do a major uh, gutting or whatever. So I, uh, and I think uh, for me we can make an exception here. Uh, I think there are many factors, but I think. One that I think uh, we've taken into account in the past is COVID-19. I mean, that has really made a mess of a lot of things. And uh, I think uh, given this situation, I have no problem using that as an exception for this place. I, I, I think it's a, a, they're a good business uh, and they'll be good for the, for the district. Thank you. Thank you. Any final comments? We have a motion and a second. Alder Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Alder Stoyer. And then Alder Lefebvre. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, like it's been mentioned before, uh, we spoke for quite a bit of time on this at committee level. And uh, our committee, I think, over time has done a pretty solid job of looking at uh, various applicants, whether they're looking for a license or for looking to uh, approve a bar license, et cetera. Uh, the, the problem that came up was the lack of communication. I think that the landlord uh, kind of dropped the ball on this one. And like I said, um, there were a couple things that could have gone better. Uh, recently got a few emails. I've also talked to a few of the other alders. I feel fairly confident that this will work. So I had originally voted against this for some of the reasons that were brought up before. Um, so I, I'm fine with it. Uh, I appreciate the dialogue. But again, like I said, our committee, I think, took a long time to take a look at this. And we were trying to include the resolution as well. But as according to uh, Attorney Bungert, you know, it sounds like it's not held is in high esteem, if you will, on, as an ordinance and such. So I think uh, I think uh, that'll be good. So I I changed my changed my vote on that and I would uh, vote to approve the license. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. Uh, no, I won't change my vote. Um, <clears throat> the reason is we have a moratorium. <clears throat> Let's follow the rules. And unfortunately, I'm, yes, I feel for, the, for these people because they thought they could open a business there. But I'm sorry, the th you're pretty naive. You think the uh, business owner, that he didn't know about the moratorium, he knew. And I heard someone tell me that he's done this before. So let's... <laughs> There's a reason for a moratorium. People wanted to put it in place for a reason. I think it's, I'm sorry, I, I'm really upset that some people say, well, let's just get rid of the moratoriums. Why? Hmm? Why? Why do you want to get rid of the moratoriums? Do you remember my speech I gave last time? Come on, let's be honest. We don't have a good reputation. In regards to this, you want to do a new mo motto for our uh, logo and all that for our um, city? Oh, what's it going to be? So, no, I'm still going to vote no because it's the moratorium. And you can be honest, and let's just say you want to get rid of moratoriums. And I know these people were caught with the moratorium, they didn't know. And that's that's crime, that should be terrible. That's terrible that somebody would do this to somebody because they thought for sure that they could open their business. I do feel for them, not against business. 
But I'm saying we have a moratorium. Once you open up the door, well, then you might as well, yeah, just why don't you just, somebody make a motion just to get rid of the moratorium because there won't be one anymore. Because you know there's going to be others who are going to come forward and say, oh, give me an exception too. You give it to someone else. So I'm sorry, I'm going to vote no. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was part of the, the uh, police process that uh, asked for and uh, was able to get the city council to listen and institute the moratoriums. At the time when it was asked for, um, our liquor establishments were, for the most part, uh, many of them were out of control. Uh, if you looked at the uh, amount of police calls for service on Bodart Street, Washington Street, Broadway Street, um, it was tying up a lot of police and rescue squad resources and other city services. And that was the reason for the, uh, the moratoriums. Um, as time has passed, um, I, I don't see that anymore. I'm not hearing reports from the police department asking for um, council help with uh, unruly or uh, establishments that aren't being operated properly by the owners. And I, I think that's a positive. I think it shows that uh, the police doing their, their business plans with the establishments, uh, stopping in with compliance checks that I just saw in the news that they're starting up again. I, I think it shows that uh, things have gotten turned around. And in hindsight, probably the uh, moratorium should, put in, should have been put in place with the ability to uh, have a sunset clause, to have them review it and maybe removed if uh, they're no longer needed. I mean, if you have laws that aren't needed, you need to get them off the books. There's no reason just to keep it there just because. So as, uh, as I started out saying, we had problems. I think a lot of those problems are gone. I think that the, uh, the taverns are being operated for the most part uh, responsibly, and I think the police department is on top of it. And if uh, they thought things needed to change or action needed to be taken, they, we would have heard it at council by this time. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell for a second time. Yep, just one thing. Yeah, thank you, Alder, uh, Alder Gillen, for a little bit of background there. Actually, not tonight, but I do plan on putting in a communication um, about the moratoriums. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know, you know, when were they instituted? Why were they instituted? How have they been working? Have they been working the way we want them? Do we still need them? I think there's a lot that uh, the current council can look at here to, to make some decisions going forward, whether we should rescind or amend or leave these... Uh, um, moratoriums alone or not, but I think it's time to, to take a look. They've been on the books a while. Let's see. Let's get the background on it, and let's see how they've performed and if they're still necessary. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good idea. Any other comments? Alder Vanderlees. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to make a comment that protection and policy, we take these cases as they come in. In other words, we, we give everybody a, a you know chance to speak and uh, we weigh on what what's put in front of us as a committee and uh, I voted for it at the beginning in other words I, I was the only vote that wanted to move forward on it but I, I think that you know as we got more information that I, I think the council can definitely okay this application this is what's on the table for tonight I'm not talking about the moratorium and all that I think the staff has to look at that and you know bring it back to the City Council and and go from there I think for what we're talking about tonight, I, th I think we should should approve it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor will signify by voting aye. 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 Nay. Nay. Uh, I don't believe so. Um, Attorney Bungert, is there a particular threshold on this vote other than majority? No, it would just be a regular majority, yes. So we have a majority voting in favor, and that motion succeeds. Thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate your attendance. On to report of the Protection and Policy Committee granting operator licenses. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any abstentions? Her name is to be held separately. Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report is adopted. Plan Commission. Motion to approve. approve. Made by Alder Corpus Act, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any items here to be handled separately? 
Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been adopted. Finance. Approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by um, Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any items here to be handled separately? Items five. Five. Two, three, and four. All right. Items two, three, four, and five will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. The exceptions of items two through five. Your wishes on items two. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. The item was pulled by Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I'm sure everybody here did, if you didn't sit through it, you watched the finance meeting. It was a uh, Pleasure to watch, <laughs> not. Um, if you add up two, three, and four, it comes to almost a million dollars, nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. And these are items um, that the goal, their concepts, in, in the first two, the goal is to study data to see if it's an effective design. It's a lot of money to explore whether or not we want to use that type of road work in the future. Um, as we saw, you know, if you watch the Finance Committee and our list of things we need to get done in the city is quite lengthy, not only this year but in the coming years. Uh, a lot of money. Those are basic things. Roads that need to be replaced, roads that need to be repaired, fire trucks, police cars, dump trucks, parks that need attention. A lot of issues, a lot of items. Those are all basic needs. I would rather these three items we not approve tonight, build that road as we normally would, take that million dollars, and put it towards uh, the basic needs, not things from an expensive wish list. I mean, we could buy all 15 police cars and a fire truck with that money. So do we want to build, do we want to buy 15 police cars and a fire truck, just as an example, roughly, or do we want to do this, these programs that may work? We won't know till they're built, until we studied if we want to use that. I think that's a very poor use of money, very poor. I know these are things we might want to look at in the future, but not now, not if you watch that finance committee, not if you look at what we need. Now is not the time to be dabbling with that. It's very irresponsible for anybody who votes for that. So um, I'd be interested to see what others say, but this one I'd vote to receive and place on file. Just a point of clarification, we, we can't use ratepayer dollars from the stormwater utility to buy police cars. I just used it as an example. We could use it towards roads. No, we could not. Uh, it was my understanding, asking uh, Director Allen Becker, that we could use this money towards other items. No, not this particular pot of money. Well, I'm sure there's something more uh, basic that we can do with it than a pie-in-the-sky project that might not even work. So I would vote to receive and place this on file. It's not needed. Not again, necessary. to clarify for not right council, now. it can be used for stormwater purposes. But not this. Other comments? Alder Dorf. So I, I am in favor of this item and, and the other two. I don't know if we're taking them as a group, but Alder Worry mentioned the other two, so I'm going to mention the other two as well. Um, we have seen in this city over the past few years serious effects of the changing of the climate, the serious storms, the serious flooding. And as a city, we're, mm -hmm. we've made a commitment to work hard on, at our level, doing what we can to improve and sustain the, the, the climate, the, the water. We're, we're trying to do as much as we can to ensure that the runoff from the farms, that the runoff from these serious storms is, is contained so that our residences don't flood. We need to take some steps in order to make sure that our, we have some support for, for climate control and for some controls to put in place. Many, many of these climate controls are new. We're not going to have a history, a long history of data because they have not been around for a long time. Our staff which I trust, studied what are some things that might be able to work, 
And for example, using the permeable surfaces um, for, for one of the reports, I think that's the second one. For the one that, that Alder Weary had brought right now, it is the, um, hmm, it's not the rain barrel project. The biofiltration system we're talking about right now um, installed in, in the street terrace. And for those people um, that don't have this in front of them, this is designed to filter the, the mixture, media mixture contained in landscaped concrete, co contained in a landscape concrete container. The filter media captures and immobilizes pollutants. And those pollutants are decomposed volatilized and incorporated into the biomass of the system's micro, macro, fauna, and flora. That's pretty technical, right? But it's cleaning up. It's called talking about capturing things that don't belong in the water and cleaning them up so that they go, don't go back into our stormwater system. We have to start somewhere. I believe this is a good place to start. This is absolutely a good use of ARPA funding and I'm very much in favor of it, and I will be voting yes on these items. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Just to, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the Alder who spoke against us, I just want to make sure I understood him. Did he say that we're spending $360 on gathering information? Is that, did I misunderstand that? Alder Weary, do you care to respond to that? <coughs> Wonderful question, uh, Alder Scannell. I will refer to an email from Director Grenier. Bear with me a moment. And Alder Weird, um, did you make a motion to receive and place on file? I, I did. Was that seconded? Second. Your Honor, that motion was not seconded from what I heard. Seconded, seconded by Alder Brunette. Sorry, it's taking a little long here. While you're searching, um, Director Grenier, could you enlighten I, us? I did find it. In developed areas, we really can't be installing ponds, so we're left with biofilters, permeable payment, and the like. Our hope with these projects is to start developing data on exactly how effective these efforts are with the intent of refining our approach before doing a lot of them across the city. Sort of a start small, learn lessons, way of doing it. So uh, I take that to mean we were not quite sure. It's not, it's not for definite. This will improve it. We're like, well, it might a little, little bit, might a lot. We're not sure. And I do have a, a, an email from Director Ellenbecker that says we can reallocate any of these funds towards whatever we want. So I, I can invite Director Ellenbecker to weigh in, but that's, that's not a proper characterization. Director Grenier? Yes. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, again, I've had this conversation with several people uh, since the Finance Committee meeting. With technology, again, the technologies that we are proposing to utilize the ARPA funding on are what we consider to be tried and true. Biofiltration has been used uh, across the country, in uh, around the world, I would say. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we did the Webster Avenue project here in, in Green Bay a couple of years ago, uh, the center medians are designed to be a large biofiltration. Uh, that's the stormwater management that was implemented uh, on the Webster Avenue project. Uh, what I mean by the build and refine, when you're using proprietary type devices like the biofilters we're looking at uh, on these two projects, they're the, the data that's published by the manufacturers of these devices provide ranges. So what we're looking to do is to get some better empirical data to find out where within the range. It's not that we're concerned or have doubts as to whether the device is effective or not, it's what is the effectiveness. So then we can uh, start assessing based on the results we get on the first projects we're doing, is this applicable in this type of an environment on another type of street? Is it better or worse in a closed or a, in the center of the city where you've got high tree canopy? Is it better suited outside uh, where it's not as developed? That that's what I mean by develop some of that data relative to whether or not we feel the devices are going to be uh, are, are going to perform or not. That we're not concerned with again. 
we're not looking at implementing the flavor of the day in stormwater management. The, the devices or the approaches that we've selected um, are tried and true technology that have been in use for several years. Yes, this is at a concept level. What I mean by that is we have not sat down and physically developed the specifics uh, for the asphalt mix that'll be used as part of the permeable pavement. That's an individual design. Um, relative to the biofiltration, we know we want to use biofiltration. We haven't designed the physical size of the biofilter, what plants will be planted in that biofilter uh, to properly capture um, the, rain, uh, the, the precipitation runoff within the street. So that's what we mean by a concept. If I, uh, if I was not clear in that, then I apologize for my lack of clarity. Thanks, Director. Alder Scannell and then Alder Burnett, Alder Galvin. Patient, the, the, the motion reads uh, to approve contingent on receiving additional information from ARPA about the ARPA. Uh, what information? There's do you a have memo. Any specifics on that? There's a memo that was produced. And pr it's in the packet. It's in the packet. Yeah, it's in there. Is it the one January? I don't know, but it's in the packet. And it was written oh, by Melissa, it's Steve, too. and Matt. Truly, it's there. Oh, it's there. Okay. All right. Then um, uh, I'd just like to hear from uh, Director Ellenbacher, and I'm, I'm good to support this, I think. Okay, well, in terms of the, the ARPA funding, we just adopted a resolution as a council. I think you'll all recall that $23.7 million was what we received as a city. We developed a framework. It was approved by our common council. So that's what we're operating under. So there, you know, there's the $3 million allocation for stormwater purposes. This bit of spending is coming out of that category of spending. Alder Burnett. Yeah, thank you. Mayor, the $3 million, which I voted for, by the way, was for stormwater, green infrastructure, and climate resilience. When I think of those things, I think of a lot of things. But uh, overwhelming concern for me in this city is flooding. Now, I do not r live in a district that has substantial amounts of flooding, although there has been some flooding due to the condition of some of our storm sewers. So when I hear climate resilience, I think, good Lord, let's help some of these people that are dealing with substantial amounts of flooding in our neighborhoods, specifically Fox River and East River and some of our other communities. So uh, I think, and the reason why I voted for the three million to, the, to this category was I thought that we could also improve storm sewer management, but we could also alleviate some flooding. That's an issue we're dealing with right now. We had a pot of $3 million to improve stormwater, but also alleviate flooding. These projects, these three projects of $990,000, for me, does not even move the needle on flood management in the city. They could contribute to some but it's really two projects out of six that uh, Mr. Matthew Heckenleibel, who works for the city, this is his area, this will be a continuation. Uh, I do have a question for Director Grenier, and then I'd like to kind of finish my comments because I support the motion. I second it, obviously. Direct, Director Grenier, when we had substantial amounts of flooding along Mason and Maine, which really made front page news for you know several major storms, the City Council Improvement and Service Committee ask you to complete a report as to what we could do for infrastructure to alleviate some of the flooding. And you came up with a lot of really good ideas, including uh, retention ponds, underground reservoirs, you, you name it. You came up with a very good list of projects. But you stated that even if the city did all of those projects, and spent tens of millions of dollars in these major storms that we had been having, you said that the amount of water, standing water, that, that all those projects would reduce would be an inch or two. Is that correct? Do you recall that conversation? Based on, the, <clears throat> excuse me, based on the different options that we had provided, there was a range of different uh, impacts that would have been, would have been realized. There were some uh, some of the options, the lower cost options that we had uh, had brought forward. Lower cost being a relative term, 
that we're going to be less effective. Some of the the larger dollar, the thirty million dollar or so uh, options that we had proposed uh, would have had a greater impact. In if memory serves, uh, that was going to be in the eight to ten inch uh, reduction range. Uh, but again, depending on how how many of the uh, the recommendations were implemented. Um, the more implementation, the more recommendations implemented, the greater effect it would have had. Okay. Would you agree that cl when when a person thinks of climate resilience, they could think of flood remediation and solving flooding issues? I think that's up to whoever you know. For as many people as as are reading something, you could get that many different interpretations. Your professional opinion, Director Grenier. My professional opinion, when we're talking about stormwater, green infrastructure, and climate resilience, that's pretty much the whole gamut. Which includes flooding. It could include flooding. It could include the green infrastructure that we're that we're discussing tonight. That's. I think the the the, the category is broad for a reason but it could include flooding okay i, I take that yes. as a yes okay thank you uh so we have three million dollars okay there's a lot of money there are a lot of projects that this city council could approve that would fit stormwater green infrastructure and climate resilience to address the immediate issue that a lot of these uh, families are dealing with along the east river and the fox river every single storm every single major weather event, these folks are terrified of having water in their basement. And my point is, it's not that I'm against green infrastructure. I love the idea. The reality is we don't have a comprehensive plan similar to what Director Grenier created for the stormwater, uh, the, the, the stormwater issues, I'm sorry, the flooding issues and the underground reservoirs and the retention ponds. We came up with a really conclusive list of projects and we determined as a council, it's not worth spending, you know, three or four, 30 or 40 million, whatever the amount was to eliminate flooding of uh, a few inches up to eight inches or 10 inches as direct, Director Grenier said. So my problem with these specific green infrastructure projects, just the two of them, is that there is no data, there are no figures that we can point to that says that this will alleviate any flooding issues whatsoever. If we had that conclusive plan, if we had a plan in front of us that said, okay, moving forward, the goal of this city government is over the next 20 to 30 years or 10 years or five years, these are the amount of green infrastructure projects we want to work on, and this is the end result. This is going to improve our stormwater. It's going to improve our quality of stormwater that goes into the bay and the river and our groundwater. This will alleviate flooding to this level. A comprehensive plan. We can't just piecemeal two to three to four projects and think it's going to have any effect on the major issue in this city, and that's flood water. I love the idea of green infrastructure. But the reality is these green infrastructure projects cost a lot more than the traditional gray infrastructure. We can work towards these things, but if we do it a piecemeal approach and come spring when people's homes are flooded again, we can say we had $3 million and we did two green infrastructure projects for 900,000 and we did rain barrels for 60,000. If we don't have a clear plan i cannot support this i want to spend the three million dollars on something that will take care of many of these things but namely flooding let's just not forget that if we do this piecemeal and the public isn't aware of how much green infrastructure will cost us year after year after year these projects could turn into boondoggles and we have no idea what the net effect is on the major issues in this city so I'm against the. Mo I'm not against spending the money. Three million dollars is wonderful, but on these three projects, I want to have some alternatives on what we could spend that those funds on to work towards the end goal, which includes reducing flooding in this city. Thank you. All together. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was. Uh, I'm on the uh, finance committee. And I was at that meeting, and I was uh, uh, pushing Director Grenier pretty hard for some answers. 
uh, if we're going to justify this expenditure to our constituents, we need to tell them what it's for, how it's going to work, and what the results are going to be. Um, we've bought uh, uh, electric or um, gas and electric vehicles. You can point to data that the, if we use this vehicle as much as we use just gas burning vehicles, we'll save X amount of gallons of gas per year. We'll reduce X amount of carbon pollutants into the air per year. And that's what I was asking for. That's all I was asking for. I don't see that in this memo. And if these GI programs have been used worldwide, I, I would think that there would be some kind of data to show how effective they could be. I mean, and obviously, different climates, different areas, you're going to have different results, depending upon the type of ground, uh, you know, the makeup of your earth and everything, uh, the amount of water you get. I mean, there's just a lot of things I know that go into that. That's what I was looking for, and I, I don't see this here. I support GI. I do. I live in the district that's getting flooded. I have the sump pump that runs continuously all summer long. I have the neighbors that had a, uh, a pond develop over four properties wide every year till one of them put in a mini storm sewer in their backyard at a cost of $8,000. Okay, I had the neighbors calling and crying and yelling at me on the phone when their homes were flooding. And the city has worked on it, I gotta admit. They, they put in the new pump at the end of Eliza Street which has uh, alleviated a lot of the problems. And a lot of the problems we have are environmentally related, and they're also related to um, uh, projects that were done uh, by the city and by private developers that, that hurt our environment. And we're paying the price for it now. Um, and I want to see our use of these monies to be used for things that are going to have an impact. I mean, and I understand we can't do it all in one year. Um, it, this is something that's going to have to be done piecemeal. There just isn't enough money to do it all in one year. And I know that over a period of time, these projects will add up and we'll see the benefits of it. Um, but if I could ask a question of, of Alder Weary. You've been an Alder for, what, 18 years? You're kind of the grandfather of the, uh, of the council. Have you seen any time in 18 years where we've had the monies to go forward with projects like this? We're always behind the eight ball. And so I, I think at some point as a community, we have to have the intestinal fortitude to say, if not now, then when? How long did we put it off? How long did we put off the Fox River cleanup? How long did we put off uh, cleaning up the East River, which used to start on fire? I mean, there's a lot of things that have been put off. And we always pay a bigger price in the long run. Um, I would still like to see some, some more data, but I do support uh, GI projects within the city of Green Bay. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. And then just a couple quick points. And these projects were included in the, you know, the, the capital improvement plan that Matt Heckenleibel has proposed. So without the ARPA resources, these projects were slated to be funded with stormwater utility resources. What we're doing here is taking ARPA dollars to fund three particular projects. These projects were chosen because of the fact that they're, you know, a bit more innovative and in making some green infrastructural and in investments. So the, the reason that that was done was to free up, I'm not debating it. The, the reason that that was done was to su supplant that stormwater funding in order to free up those resources, which can be set, spent flexibly all across the city on businesses and residents. Thank you, Your Honor. Other comments? Yeah. Alder Gerlach. Uh, of course, I, I never have, um, I have no background in any of this and I don't have the, um, the history that most of you have on these things. Um, I just want to be clear because of course, um, the uh, intersection of Mason and Maine was uh, mentioned, that is in my district. I don't know um, what value this has, but I, I just want to be clear with everyone that uh, shortly after I was elected uh, to represent District 3, I heard from Mr. Heckenleibel and discovered this huge plan that had been put together from my district to mitigate flooding. It was a $30 million plan, 
and he and I spent months together working on that. We went out and we looked at all of the places where these ponds were supposed to be built. I personally talked to every single property owner, homeowners and business owners that would have been affected. We, we studied it up and down. We had neighborhood meetings. We did everything we could. And in the long run, after all of that, Mr. Hecken-Leibel told me that the consultants felt that even with um, the uh, expenditure of $30 million, if we had $30 million to spend on it, it would make a negligible effect. So I don't know the answer, but I just want, to, want you all to know that that, that project was, was absolutely explored uh, in every way we, we possibly could, and it was simply put back on the shelf as not feasible. As far as this $3 million and the green infrastructure, I leave that to your wisdom. I just wanted to give you some background on the other. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of questions for Director Guineer and perhaps one for uh, Director Ellenbecker. Um, Director Guineer, several years ago, um, we had submitted a communication about um, creating a report to address all of the flooding that was going on in the city. And if I recall correctly, we kind of dusted off a report that was even done a couple of years prior. And the number that I seem to recall that, that struck me in that report that it would cost approximately $100 million um, to deploy all of the, the remedies, uh, you know, that, that necessary, I guess, to correct flooding in the city. Uh, do you recall that report? I do. Uh, the financial cost of implementation was extrapolated based on prior projects, and I believe the number was in excess of 150 million. Okay, thank you. And then within that report, do you recall offhand, was GI uh, ever mentioned, green infrastructure ever mentioned in that report as uh, one of the solutions that was recommended to be deployed? At that time, green infrastructure was not a significant portion of what we were looking at, no. Okay. Um, during the the uh, the last finance committee meeting, uh, a question had been raised about this investment. At the time, you had mentioned that uh, that these particular projects would not have a noticeable impact. However, it would be the first step in what would be many steps that would ultimately be needed to have a long term impact. Has your department studied uh, at all? I guess how much that investment would be long term before we would have a measurable impact. No, we have not. Okay. And then do we, I mean, obviously, green infrastructure, at least from what I'm gathering here, is more expensive. Uh, the theory, I presume here, is that long term, uh, it would have a greater impact from an engineering perspective. Would, would that be an accurate assessment? Over time, as additional projects are brought online, the impact gets greater. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but at this time, again, just to reiterate, we, we do not know what that total investment would be before we could get a measurable impact. And I mean, if we were to request that, I guess, how long would it take your department uh, to be able to provide council with some type of report about what that long-term investment might be? Okay, I, I don't mean to be difficult, but I'm going to ask for some further definition. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about measurable impact on the storm sewer system as a whole, within the individual sub-basin that this project lies, or within the block that we're putting uh, the green infrastructure in, because depending on the scale of what we're looking at, that, that measurable impact could change dramatically. The smaller you refine down your area of study, the more impact it's going to have. Okay, understood. And I and and I don't think you're being difficult. I appreciate that that explanation. Um, the uh, a, a question for Director Ellen Becker, if I could. Uh, Director Ellen Becker, I'm looking at the bond request, and of course we're going to have a discussion around that in a little bit. Um, but there is uh, this year. Uh, in this year's bond request, $8.3 million being requested for stormwater and another $114,000 uh, for forestry expenses on the stormwater tab. 
uh, is it possible when you think about this three million, I would have presumed these 8.3 million are necessary and immediate needs. Uh, this three million that we have allocated from ARPA funds towards stormwater, is that a possible use or allocation for those funds? That's where this is going. So yes. Right, but add-ons, right? Because this, this project, well, it's being proposed that this funding be allocated to implement the GI, right. but it's not necessary that the well, GI be included. Well, just, I get, no, I'm just, the question to staff. yeah, I'm just trying to clarify though. I mean, this $3 million, like you said, was allocated mm -hmm. towards stormwater. These projects were included in the capital improvement plan that Matt Hackenleibel has brought forward. They were simply identified as good uses of, of that, not the entire $3 million, but of that roughly $1 million. Right, and, and I, I appreciate that piece. I think my broader question, however, is looking at the $8.3 million that, that's being requested. Is this the only thing that ARPA can be applied towards, are these projects, or are there other things within that $8.3 million where this ARPA fund could be allocated? Yeah, it's totally flexible within stormwater. Okay, so that is an option. Okay. Uh, yes. I, I, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Director Ellen Becker. Yes, yes, I was going to say, um, anything probably in the stormwater would probably be viable. Um, again, I'd have to look at the detail of every one of the projects in stormwater, but um, the majority of them probably would qualify for that $3 million. Okay, thank you. Uh, it, that's all I have for questions. Um, I, I, I mean, I'll leave it to, to maybe any other questions that might exist on the floor. Alderdorf. Well, um, I want to reiterate something that I think Alder Galvin was saying that, and I'll say it a little differently, but the journey begins with a single step. We need to start the journey. There's never been a time in the last 18 years where we've had this, these extra funds um, to go forth and to try out some new green infrastructure or any kind of a project like this. And certainly we could choose to use those funds on something else. I believe that using the funds for the green infrastructure is the right thing to do when I look at the pro, pro excuse me when I look at the project outcomes water quality improvement stormwater runoff reduced and aesthetic appeal is one of the outcomes another outcome pollutant reduction water quality improvement stormwater runoff reduction aesthetic appeal and pollinator pollinator habitat. Those are things that our Sustainability Commission has been looking at and working on and trying to move the city toward. The other comment I want to make is that I keep hearing the number three million being bandied about. We're talking about less than one million of that for these three projects. We haven't even mentioned the rain barrel project. Is it appropriate that I may mention that? All right. And the, with the rain barrel project, $60,000 is going to be um, put toward that, and that project is for City of Green Bay residents that want to start a garden up and want to have it be a rain garden and get a rain barrel, they'll be allowed to come and get a rain barrel up to, they, or be reimbursed up to $70 for a rain barrel that they may purchase elsewhere. And that would get people involved at kind of a grassroots level here in the city. It would allow people to go out into their gardens, to, to use the water from these rain barrels for their gardens, and to have a part in helping our city become a greener city. So I think that is another, another wonderful project that, that people could actually see in their backyard. It's the government helping people to help our climate, to help our city become a greener city. So once again, I am in favor of all three of these projects. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett, and then, are, are you in, in the queue? Yeah. Quite and then Alder Weary? Yeah, and it's, really it's a, it's a point of order and then a conversation, but you just had an interchange with Alderman Weary, and, and I, I like a little clarification on that from the city attorney because in the past, the former mayor, and I'm not trying to make a big deal of it, but it's always yeah. something that kind of was curious about. In the past, the former mayor would step down when he's advocating a position. He would do that quite often. He would give the floor, he'd give the gavel to the city council president. And uh, attor attorney, could you kind of give some clarification on that? Can the mayor advocate for a position as chair, or can he answer questions when he's asked questions, but interject, com and again, not trying to be difficult, but I think we need some clarification because I don't like tension. If we can avoid it. Yes. So um, 
our ordinances provide that um, the presiding officer may speak on a question um, or make any motion when they vacate their role as presiding officer. Um, and the definition of speaking on a question um, involves debate. Um, debate in parliamentary procedure refers to a discussion on the merits of a pending question, uh, meaning that is whether it should or should not be agreed to. So providing information or providing background information um, by the presiding officer is much akin to how staff would be providing information or answering questions or giving clarification context with respect to information that the council members need in order to debate um, with basically discussing whether something should or should not be agreed. So in that specific instance when Alderman Weary, you know, at, asked the mayor to step down, should the mayor have stepped down? I believe the mayor was providing context. Um, he did indicate that he's not debating, he's not advocating for it one way or the other. He's I providing- beg, uh, uh, Attorney Bongard, I beg to differ. He was Alder, advocating- Alderman, that, You don't debate staff. Excuse me? You don't I'm debate not debating staff. staff. I'm disagreeing with her decision. She said that you weren't advocating for a position. You most certainly were advocating for a position. In fact, you cut off Director Ellen Becker when she was responding to a question that was directed to her, but not you as chair. To I just. Uh, Alderman Johnson asked Director Ellen Becker a question. Before she could open her mouth, you interjected and provided the answer. That is leading the discussion towards a potential outcome that you find des desirable. And I think as chairman, you need to step down. I would be city council president. i take the gavel. You could speak for hours on that and I wouldn't care. But when you advocate a position from your chair, it's not appropriate. I agree with Alderman Weary. I haven't said anything in the past, but you do this more and more. Just step down. You know, speak I, for hours. I appreciate the point that you're making. I think I'm pretty sensitive to the rules of this body, but I will certainly take that to heart. Um, you're very sensitive to criticism, and this is a perfect example of that. So I'd like to ask um, Attorney Bunger to clarify. You said that he was not inappropriate you're saying that he didn't need to step down because he was not advocating a position. I believe he was advocating a position. Is that, that is still your opinion that he was not advocating a position? To clarify, I didn't state whether it was appropriate or not. I simply stated that as part of the discussion that he was having, he stated that he is not debating the issue but providing context and clarification. So I as the parliamentarian and, not, and I'm not taking a side as to the substance. I'm basically putting putting forth the rules and the body regulates itself. So I'm not, I don't act as, as the judge um, in making a determination as to whether he was or was not. I'm basically stating or restating what was his position or what his statements were. And he proceeded to state that he was not debating the issue but providing clarification and as to, uh, I, I understand your point as to that he interrupted and answered a question, but again, answering a question under the definition of what debate entails is not necessarily speaking on a question. Okay, uh, real quick and I'll move on, but that could be interpreted by uh, a cynical person that he is answering questions directed towards staff to get a desired outcome. That's the statement that I make and I stand by that. If staff reports to him and these are his objectives and his ideas, if he steps in and answers Point as- of order, is this even germane to the discussion? I'm sorry, um, President Burnett, I've heard enough. This is not germane to the discussion. Your criticism of the mayor is not what we're dealing with. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Okay, well, the okay, so $3 million for stormwater green infrastructure and climate resilience, a million of that, correct, is towards these projects. There will be $2 million more. We have a pot of money to alleviate some of the major issues in this city. For all of the alders, and, and it is my opinion, all of the alders who live in districts that flood heavily, we're basically going to be taking a million dollars of a $3 million pot of money that doesn't come very often, to put towards a project. I believe that the public works director and his staff should come up with a list of alternatives because the monies don't come available like this. And it's a wonderful opportunity to address 
some of the major issues. I believe that the receive and place on file is absolutely a good motion because it doesn't kill uh, green infrastructure projects, doesn't kill stormwater improvements, and it certainly doesn't kill cli uh, climate resilience. We have already agreed to allocate three million towards that. What it basically does is sends a signal to the, the, the staff to say, come with some options and come with some long-term projections because right off the bat, we'll put a you know, million dollars towards these projects and then year after year without a proper cost analysis to make any noticeable difference in improvements, we're gonna be asked year after year. And so then if, for, if future councils decide, well, it would cost you know, $300,000 for gray infrastructure and 600,000 for green infrastructure and the city's in a pretty bad financial position right now, perhaps we'll go with the $300,000 for gray infrastructure. And those are decisions that the, for, the future councilors are going to make because of the bonding requests going forward. So I never want to assume just because something's in a capital improvement pl pl plan that we're gonna do that year after year. Each council will have some level of discretion on how those funds are spent. So uh, a receiving place on file just says, instead of $60,000 towards rain barrels, although you know very good and pro uh, nice thing to do, is that the role of a city government? People have been buying rain barrels all throughout this city for years upon years without being you know, compensated financially. I'm, a, I, I'm in favor of people buying rain barrels, but should we use $60,000 to have people buy rain barrels when that could be used to alleviate funding? So uh, those are my comments. Alder Dorf, I do think I was completely in line. I was addressing uh, an issue that came up between an alderman. Point of order, I think we're done with that. Are you the chairperson now, I'm just Ms. Dorf? making a point of order. I okay. think we're done with that. I was, clear, I was trying to ease tension between a member of our council and the mayor on a question that came up. And uh, Attorney Bunger asked, answer the question. I accept her answer now. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'll accept it. Thank you. Alder Weary and then Alder Gerlach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My two cents on that, since I have been here the longest, is I was here for Mayor Jaden. And he always said, I'm here just to run the meeting. Ran the meeting. When he wanted to debate something, he stepped down. And Tony Tyson at the time would, would step up and run the meeting. So anytime an information statement turns into strongly advocating or prolonged expressions of merits, that's when I do have a problem. And I, I don't care if you step down, that would be fine. But uh, that's where I was coming from. It's not a bully, pup, bull, pup, bully pulpit. Um, going back to the item at hand here, the, it's the one in particular, but it really addresses all three. Um, government waste is incredible. It's easy to talk yourself into things when it's just us sitting around with staff and how great something is. But you know what? When the rubber meets the road and we have $32 million worth of projects, more than I've ever seen in all my years, it really pisses people off that we would look at these projects over. You look at our own list here. You want to look at things we could spend it on? Seymour Park Stormwater Pond, $3.5 million. There's one. Um, Seymour Park Stormwater East Side, $2 million. There's another one. Uh, Main Street Flood Project Design. I guess we still are working on it because there's $100,000 in here for that. That's a concrete thing we can work on right here, right now. Or the Grandview Stormwater Facility for $1.5 million. Plenty of concrete basic projects that we can work on. These are needs. Needs, not expensive wants. I understand we want to get there at some point. Not today. A lot of you are up for election. So you're going to have to explain it to people why you're voting for things that you want and not things that we need. Thank you. Alder Gerlach. Uh, could I please ask a question of Susan House? Uh, I'm not sure if Susan. She's here. Is she? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I know, Susan, that we've asked you this question before. But since this is a, a motion to receive and place on file, I want to ask again, what is the um, time constraint on um, you know on allocating these dollars there is a time constraint in that many of the green infrastructure or stormwater projects do take time to design and get the, the construction 
crews, et cetera, in line and, and operating before the funds are have to be allocated so and expensed. So there is a, a timeline in that respect. And there's also a timeline in that we need to make sure that we have all of the electrical fiber and all of that all lined up to address the infrastructure roads and green infrastructure items. We do have a little bit of time um, for other for other projects like the police items that we addressed at the um, prior meeting. We do have a little bit of time that way, but with the green infrastructure, we do need to plan that now and start working on that sooner than later. And, and statutorily, we need to spend the funds by 2024 or dedicate the funds by 2024 and they have to be spent by 2026 according to the federal government. Correct. Or we send them back. Okay. We don't want to do that. Other questions or comments? I think the, we got Alder Johnson and then Alder Scannell. Alder Lafave has her hand up too. Okay. And then Alder Lafave. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I came into this with an open mind and I really had a lot of questions and I appreciate staff's response and I, I've enjoyed uh, some of the discussion here tonight, sadly not all of it. Um, you know, but, but I think ultimately where my brain is, is coming at on this is I, I think what we have in front of us are a couple of nice to have projects when unfortunately at this time government is still not meeting its most basic responsibility to remediate flooding. We talked about that report while well, several years old um, $150 million of, of projects that had been earmarked within that report that identified something that would have an immediate impact on our flooding needs. And I agree that, you know, this is one time funding that we have the opportunity to do projects with. And I would, I think I'm going to lean in, in the direction of trying to leverage that one time funding in a way that moves the needle, that has an immediate impact because those are the needs that I see in my district. Um, I think I would feel differently about this if we had a plan for the long-term funding um, to get this, envelop this, this investment to have an impact. But right now, what we've heard is that these, these investments would not have an immediate impact, and we don't know how much it's going to cost to get us there because we haven't had that long-term conversation. So I will support the motion to receive and place on file, um, but that doesn't mean that I would oppose these items if they came back at a later date with a more comprehensive plan so that we can better understand, again, of, of all of these needs we have in our community, how do we get there now? How do we have an impact now? I think that's what the residents, in, at least in my district, want to see, and I'm not sure that, that these investments help us do that. Thank you, Mayor. Alder Scannell, and then Alder Lefebvre. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. I, I kind of disagree with the way this is being characterized, that this, these, these are, uh, just uh, uh, inconsequential steps. Uh, every one of the, even rain barrels, will play a role in reducing stormwater runoff. And they will also play a role in what we'd like to see with our, our uh, city with urban, how we, um, how we handle our lawns. We need to start, if we're gonna start thinking green, we need to start rethinking about how we handle our houses, our, our lawns, how we break, how that whole mindset we have of trim, cut, everything's trim and neat. Uh, we really want to start seeing more uh, gardens. We want to see more infrastructure that supports uh, runoff from the, uh, uh, from the gutters, from our, our, our I, I think these, every one of these, they're small, but they're not insignificant. And we have to start somewhere. I think we get the ball rolling, so I still support it. And, uh, you know, bringing up elections, that's also a form of bullying. That's not a point of debate. Thank you. I'll do the fave. Um, yeah, listening to everyone, um, at first I thought, oh yes, this is really great and I would vote for the uh, green infrastructure. And I do believe in green in infrastructure. I think we have to think on this 
but I think some of this, like the green barrels, I think that's part of the sustainability committee. They should be they should be taking this part, and they should be going out and they should have a campaign and getting it out to the public. And then also they could also maybe be working on um, helping having some businesses helping on that issue. You know, when we have projects and there's a couple in some for Stormont. They're big projects, very expensive projects. And I kind of thinking, well, we do have this money and maybe yes, we have these projects already already set up and that maybe this money should go towards that because I don't like bonding. I don't like bonding all the time. It's, you know, it's not good to always bonding, okay? And we do have this money and there are projects that are already set there that we could put this money towards and I think the green infrastructure is a good thing, but I think it's something that we need to talk about and we need to look at. And I think the sustainability committee, that should be something that they should be pushing. They should be working on. And I think we could also go out to the public. And why don't we have a campaign of raising money for some of these things besides you know, taking these funds? And so I'm kind of on the fence on this, how am I gonna vote? Because I do believe in the green infrastructure but I also think we have projects there that really need this money. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Mayor. Is, it, is my understanding correct that these three items would have been included in the, the bonding, in the bonding document if they wouldn't have been over here? That, that, that you just, that these items were part of the plan already. They were included in, in what DPW thought should be done. They're not just suddenly appearing because we have ARPA funds. Is my understanding correct that these items are here because ARPA funds could be used upon these items? Otherwise, they, they still would have been included. This just isn't, isn't something extra, some extra idea. I think that's what you were trying to explain before. I'm so happy that I understood that correctly. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Director Grenier, is there anything else that you wanted to weigh in on there? No, that is a correct statement. These, these projects, <clears throat> the projects that are being considered tonight are listed in our 2022 capital program that we submitted to finance. So when the bond request was up for discussion but not action, at the last finance committee meeting, the supporting documentation that we provided uh, in support of our bond request did include these items. So we had planned on going forward with them regardless of whether or not there was ARPA funding. Now, one of the things that we did identify in the memo that we provided uh, subsequent to the finance committee meeting is by utilizing the ARPA funds rather than the stormwater funds, that gives us the ability to take the money that we would have otherwise spent on these green infrastructure pro, uh, projects and that will go into a different fund a segregated fund and that will provide the money for a grant program and or a revolving loan fund program which will fund additional green infrastructure projects that property owners will be able to apply to on private property, not within the public right of way. Thank you for that explanation. Thanks, Director. Alder Sawyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I think one of the things I'm having trouble with, you know, I mean, we do bond for things. Yes, we do. Uh, do those bond requests always go through? Not always. So that, that's one, one area that I just wanted to clarify. Uh, the fact that we're gonna be talking later about the bonding requests as well uh, from finance, you know, for the city, uh, talking about 19 million. You know, I know it's a draft, you know, I know we're gonna be talking about things, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm really of the opinion that we need to look at our immediate problems. You know, I was listening very closely to Alder Galvin because a lot of flooding is in his district. I was listening to the Alders where the problems really do exist. And I, I, I know that he was saying that green infrastructure is a good thing and we need to look at it. But Alder, um, Alder Johnson says we need to 
move the meter. We need to make, move it. We may, we've got to make a tick. We've got to make something happen. And I realize that some of these are planning initiatives of sorts. And I think there's some really good stuff with it. But I, I still don't feel, feel fully comfortable that we, we have a plan totally in place here. Um, I was kind of leaning toward it initially, but I think with the discussion, you know, when you receive and place something on file, we can bring it back. And I think a lot of the alders that want to do that want to bring it back. So you know, what's the harm? You know, I think we need to study it a little bit further and I will look at it very closely as well. So at this time I will support um, uh, holding, receiving and placing on file. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach? Another quick question, please, if I may. And uh, Your Honor, if this is an inappropriate question, please tell me, okay? Oh, this is a question for Director Grenier. Um, I know you never have enough money to do all the things you feel that we need to do. Do you personally, as our Director of Public Works, do you fully support this, um, this plan? Is that appropriate? Yeah. <clears throat> Without taking sides, mm -hmm. I want to be very clear about that, okay? What we have prepared is a capital program that meets the criteria that the Common Council has established for us. By that, I mean the Common Council has challenged us to increase the amount of road fund, uh, the, the amount of roads that we have proposed or that we're getting completed. We have proposed that as part of the 2022 capital program. The Common Council has identified a commitment to going forward to green infrastructure. We have proposed that as part of this capital program. I would not bring forward something to the Common Council that I didn't think met the criteria that the Common Council had established for the development of our program. So in my opinion, my professional opinion, Everything that we have brought forward under all three of the items under discussion are consistent with the directive that we've been given by the Common Council. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. So the motion before us is receive and place on file. Any further comments on that? Seeing none, we will vote. Can we use the board? Yes. A request has been made to use the board, Clerk. The motion yes, thank you, <clears throat> Your Honor. Um, Alder members, you may vote. Sorry, alders, you may vote. And this is the motion to receive and place on file. Yes, it is. Excuse me again. If we vote yes to receive and place on file, I understand what that means. If we vote no, then I'll make a new motion. Then, yeah. then we go back to a new motion. Okay. Then you go back to the previous motion, I believe. Yeah, and there was a motion to approve prior to receive and place on file. Um, okay, so Alders Galvin, Stevens, please vote or ask, tell me how you'd like to be reported. Okay, thank you. Here's your displayed vote. And that is received and placed on file seven to five. On to item three. Yeah, move to approve. Motion to approve item three. Sorry, who was that made by, Your Honor? I'm sorry, Clerk? I did not hear who made the motion. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Alder Dorf, and who seconded it? Uh, Alder Dorf made the motion seconded by Alder Scannell to approve item three. Thank you. Alder Weary on the motion. Well, this uh, same discussion is number two. Just repeat the last hour, basically, and motion to receive and place on file. Second. Motion to receive and place on file. That was made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Brunette. Any discussion? Board vote again. Your Honor, is that a board vote or yes, voice? board vote? Just give me a moment. Thank you, Alders, you may vote. Thank you, here is your displayed vote. Oh, sorry. 
There you are. And that two is seven to five? Yes. On to item four. Move to approve. Motion is approved, made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Alder Weary. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Motion to receive and place on file, made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Burnett. We will use the board again. Thank you, Alder. Uh, just give me one moment. Thank you. You may vote. Okay. And here is your displayed vote. That is six to six. Uh, so I would vote no. Apparently so. Motion to approve, and that was seconded. Um, all in favor, we will use the board. Thank you, Your Honor. And Alders, just give me one moment. I had moved it on to the second item. Just give me one moment. Thank you, vote. This is a motion to approve. Yes, to approve. No, I made a motion to approve. Are you, do you requesting to? Okay, Alder Scannell needs to change his vote. And how would you like to change your vote, Alder Scannell? Uh, to aye. Thank you. Your Honor, was there another alder who wished to change his or her vote? I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. Here's your displayed vote. At two ties six to six, I vote in favor. And on to item five. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. We'll go to Alder Dorf for some comments. Thank you. So I spent a few hours um, trying to come up with an explanation for why we had asked council to weigh in on this before we're ready to go to bonding. I am going to make a motion at the end to receive in place on file because that is really all we're asking. We're not gonna be voting on bonding tonight. Um, so just, I would just want you guys to know up, uh, up top that that's the motion that I would be making at the end. So to clearly explain to, to you and, and to whoever is watching, because there's been a lot of comment about this, this bonding, what I'm asking on behalf of finance is to get a ballpark figure to shoot for in terms of the bonding using the Ehlers chart. You all have the Ehlers chart. The Ehlers chart looks like this. For our studio audience, looks like this, okay? That way we can make the best use of the time we have at finance in looking for further reductions or additions to the bonding request, and we can bring, bring back to the whole council our recommendation. Secondly, as I stated at the finance meeting, we're not gonna be discussing individual items tonight to be approved or removed. That work is gonna be done at committee, at finance. We're not asking you to do the finance committee work. But we, what we want to be able to do is frame our discussion at finance and bring something back to council that will, will be somewhat acceptable. The final decision regarding bonding should happen at our next council meeting. You have some documents regarding bonding in front of you. The first thing I wanna talk about is the unaltered prioritized requests of the department heads. That's that 19.5 million, which is now down to 18.8 .8 million. But that's the 19.5 million. The department heads 
the chief police chief, the fire chief, DPW, parks, brought forward to, um, tech, IT, brought forward their priority needs. They have not been altered or edited by the mayor's office. They have not been altered or edited by finance at this time. This was a request made at the last bonding by several council members that wanted to see for themselves what are, what are the departments want before the mayor says take stuff out, before finance takes the things out. So this time, that is what we talked about at finance, and it is unusual because we usually had a much lower number to start with, and that's why that 19.5 million was so startling to me. If you watched the meeting, you would have seen that. They are also not everything that every department would have wanted. Of course not. These are their prioritized needs. They're the priori priorities of the department, and we may not be able to even bond for all of these priorities. That's gonna be up to the whole council. So today, as chair of finance, I'm asking us to determine a threshold, a range of acceptable amounts to bond for. And the Ehlers chart is fairly accurate, but since that chart was produced, the requests have dropped from 19.5 to 18.8 .8 million at the top. But on this chart that you have, that we're gonna be talking about in a minute, it isn't 19.5 anymore, but it's close enough. It's in that ballpark. So in my opinion, that 18.8 or 19.5, I'm gonna give you my opinion right off the bat. That's too much. That's, that's too big. I'd like to see that to be reduced. In the past, we've always striven to keep our, what we bond for pretty much equal with what we've been able to pay off. But that's not gonna be able to happen this time because this year, we're only able to pay off 8.5 million. And that is not, if we only bond for another 8.5 million, there's so much we will be giving up. We could do that. It's up to council to decide that. My personal opinion is that that's not realistic. So we're looking from you tonight through some discussion for a direction as to what range we're shooting for. The real question here is what are we willing to forego if we don't want to bond for $18.8 .8 million? And where can it be taken from? So I did a little, little addition. You won't find this in the, in the charts, but totally the police are asking for about 1.7 million total. Parks, about 1 million. IT, 50,000. Fire, 2.75 million. And guess what? Then comes DPW, 13,230,000. So if we're going to reduce that bonding down, the lion's share is going to have to come from DPW. DPW at 13,230,000, of that, 11.4 million are various pavement projects. So again, we're gonna be looking at reductions in our pavement projects. And the, because the majority of their bonding is for the roads, it's for pavement projects. So whatever we don't, you know, we're not gonna be able to get much out of the police cars, a little bit, maybe a little bit about, a, get out rid of a fire engine, don't, don't put in a, baseball field, but that's not gonna get us down a lot. What's gonna get us down a lot is giving up some of our road projects. So we as a council, we ask for roads to be prioritized. The percentage of roads from last year to this year has not gone up. Guess what, we're not asking, we're not being able to do a whole lot more roads, but what has gone up is the cost of the materials, which has made this go sky high. So we can and we will, if needed, ask police and fire and parks to make reductions at finance next week, but those department requests cannot support the kind of reductions we would need to avoid any increase in the levy. The lion's share needs to come from DPW. Most of that would be reducing road construction, and we need to increase the levy if we're not gonna do that. The Ehlers chart shows us that if we go from 19.5 to 15 million, this is, again, I'm gonna be straight honest, this is what I think is a good number to shoot for. The difference in a annual cost 
on a $150,000 home is 52 cents. That's how much it will go up. Look at the chart. It'll go up from, if we only went to 12 million, it would be at 207.84. And if we go up to 15 million, it will be at 208.36. So 15 million will give an increase of 52 cents for a $150,000 home. And then if you look at how that chart intersects with the 12 million, you can see the blue line. I'm sorry, those of you at home cannot see the blue line, but there's a blue line and a green line and a, and a red line. The red line goes off the charts. I think it goes way too high, but the blue and green lines do intersect. And I think that 15 million is a reasonable number. So I'd really like us to have a discussion um, on what, is, what you want us to be aiming for next week. We have to get this bonding passed by our very next meeting in order for monies to be dedicated. Fire trucks take a long time to build, nine months to 12 months to 18 months. The roads, we gotta get in there, we gotta get the bidders. We got, we've gotta get our, our bids in to these, con, or accept bids from con, the construction workers in order for us to get our roads built first. So we can't be waiting on bonding. So my motion overall is to receive in place on file, and then I hope that we, I get a second for that, and then we can have a healthy discussion about what should we be aiming for to bring back to council. Alderdorf makes a motion to receive in place on file. Second. Seconded by Alder Scano. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know it is quite the change from past years where um, the mayor's office would work directly with department heads to whittle down an amount and then the department heads would put forward their requests and there would always be a column here's what department heads request here's what the mayor thinks it should be and that's presented to us and then the council was always the third column here's what finally got represented you know or approved I've, I've seen many projects taken out and put in of numerous kinds you know because council obviously can have different priorities than than the mayor's office which is fine that's what we're here for um, I I would like to see um, the mayor's office provide uh, his priorities and preferred projects um, along with total bonding target so I would make a motion to refer to the mayor's office and have that prepared for the next finance committee I'm not sure if that supersedes the receiving place on file attorney Bungert yeah. I'm reviewing the priorities. Give me one second. You bet. Any other comments, Alder Weary? Um, yeah, if, if it doesn't, um, I believe it does. But if it does not, then I would hope we would vote it down so we could take up that that measure. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Alder Johnson. Um, is there any reason that your office would not want to provide that recommendation? Well, Meaning, does it require a motion? That's what I was going to say is that's that's what's going to happen. I mean, the way that I view this to provide a little bit of background is we don't normally do work sessions. You know, a lot of municipalities sort of do work sessions. I think this is a useful exercise, um, as I said at the front of the meeting, for our department heads to bring forward the objective request, have us provide some feedback, give a sense of things. Um, but yes, then absolutely, I'll be bringing forward what I'm comfortable with. With that understanding that you are bringing this forward anyway, I'll withdraw my motion. OK. Thank you, Alder. Um, additional comments or questions on the item? Alder Johnson? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just a question for Director Ellen Becker. Um, and, and I appreciate this, this table that's been laid out here. Um, and, and of course, one of the things that's talked about in here is, you know, what that levy increase would need to be to support the debt service on um, the amount that, that we would bond. How, however, um, it's been suggested that we would need to increase the levy. Is, is that our only option or is there an option to, I guess, become a little bit more efficient operationally so that it could absorb that? Is that a possibility? Well, um, the impact of taking out a larger bonding will certainly increase the levy for debt. 
um, I think you're asking the question is whether or not the mill rate would actually go up if there was a way you'd find efficiencies and reduce somewhere else along on, on the expense side or we had enough growth on the assessed side, you know, maybe you wouldn't have it, the levy would not necessarily go up. But because of this larger bonding, your the levy needed for debt service, that portion would need to go up. Yes, whether okay. or not you could find it an offset somewhere else or increase revenues or reduce expenses somewhere else. But yeah, this- it, it, And I appreciate that explanation. I think really at the end of the day, I think you, you stated it better than what I was asking, which is this is this is the amount of levy that, that's required to support the debt service. And there are ways, as you mentioned, I mean, there could be accessible uh, growth value. I mean, we could potentially have, I don't have a table in front of me, but TIDs maybe that are that are expiring that could be contributing. I mean, there are other things that we could be looking at as well. So uh, th that was the only question that I had, and I do support the motion. Thanks, Elder. Other questions or comments? Thank you. Elder Burnett? Yeah. Uh, thank you, and I just want to remind every, everyone, iron sharpens iron, so as though we have tensions and squabbles about certain things we are all one city and we all work together and this is a good example of that my opinion uh, on bonding <clears throat> is that uh, and this would probably be no surprise to any of you perhaps is that i recently read that the united states government is 30 trillion dollars in debt now okay 30 trillion dollars in debt for a government entity to be uh you know owed to foreign governments and other treasury holders it's a scary thought governments deeply in debt limit flexibility moving forward and you know i relate that down to the local level green city of green bay you know due to many factors the cost of equipment materials cost of labor inflation you name it we're dealing with the economic situation where uh, we are faced with a larger bond issue. Part of that is the capital improvement plan that the council asks staff and the mayor to do. Treasury holders, it's a scary thought. Governments deeply in debt, hey, limit uh, clerk, flexibility. Clerk, moving clerk Jeffries, <laughs> it's got, it's got an echo. Uh, quick, there we go. Oh my God, goodness. Go ahead, Alder Burnett. I said it twice, so that's a good sign. Anyways, my point is that governments that due to the circumstances of the the environment that we're working with you know it's scary times and, and I know we promised the constituents and I myself want more roads done I get that we did the city staff and the mayor's office did exactly what we asked them to do for a while and that is to bring forward a proposal for a capital improvement plan and that goes into several years now on a separate uh, email I you know, contacted Director Ellen Becker and looked at like the trend line year after year and that the debt is going to make a sh rather sharp increase if we, you know, follow the capital improvement plan. So obviously we need to make some changes. Otherwise, we're going to increase our debt capacity. And the reason why that's concerning to increase debt capacity in this environment is that the deeper a municipality goes in debt, that requires more money to service the debt. So year after year, especially if it's levy supported debt, we're gonna to have to increase taxes in order to service the debt. And then when you increase taxes, a couple hundred thousand dollars to service debt, that means you have to borrow more money the following year. On and on you go, it's a vicious cycle. So to answer Alderperson Dorf's question, um, you know, where do I fit? I kind of like the idea of trying to get that to a reasonable level uh, you know, much more in line with what we had been doing. I know that's going to be an extraordinary ask, and I'm willing to offer my suggestions on what I would cut because I don't want to, you know, make this entirely a, a issue with the mayor. And then, oh, see, the mayor did this, or he supposed cutting that. I think hopefully, as a as a council, we can kind of move past that and work on this issue together, and not score any political points <clears throat> in regards to what gets cut or what gets proposed. But I. Um, I am concerned. I'm concerned about a high debt load because it's going to require more uh, levy supported dollars and the cycle will continue. I think the public understands the financial situation that other municipalities are doing or going through. And as much as we can be lean and maybe like kind of circle the wagon, so to speak, kind of get through this period of time with acquiring as little debt as possible to hopefully be in a better position when things turn around throughout our country. Our country's $30 trillion in debt, our city's over $200 million in debt. 
you know, borrowing eight to 10 million more than what we did last year in the last few years is a real frightening concept. So we need to make cuts and I'm willing to offer my suggestions if I'm asked. Um, but those are my comments and of course support the motion and I appreciate the mayor offering to uh, come up with his proposals uh, and bring it back to the council. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. What number am I aiming for then in finance? I, I, I didn't understand. If, it, if you, could you ask? I'm Alder Burnett. Oh, sure. Can sure. I mean, uh, the same amount that we did last year with some flexibility depending on the, 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 the intricacies of different projects. Which was what? Like a fire truck. I mean, the, for example, the <clears throat> police cars, there's 34,000. Obviously, we won't need to replace all of them, this bonding issue, maybe one less fire truck, some of the pavement no, I, projects. I'm just asking for a, a, the number, which was what? 11,000, 11 million, 12 million? What, well, what was that what number? Was it, I, D Director Ellenbacker sent me an email, I can't see it, but for me, it would be a target what we, basically less than what we paid off. So we're still making good financial traction. We're paying off whatever we paid off in debt this year, that's what we should be under that. Less than 8.2 million. That's what you want us to, from 18.8 .8 down to 8.2. That was, that is what you're suggesting. Well, I said it would be difficult. I didn't say I'd support it. <laughs> I, you asked the question, that's what my target would be. And Thank I just you. said it would be difficult, but that doesn't mean Alderdorf that I, I wouldn't, if the proper conditions and certain projects, when we hear from staff, just how critical mm -hmm. they are, I'm a reasonable person. I wouldn't say no to fire trucks and police cars if they're breaking down and, and need to be in the shop every other day. Like, I'm, I'm reasonable. You asked for a target <coughs> figure. I said eight million with some flexibility to go above that if necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Other questions? Alder Gerlach, since you haven't spoken yet. I, I just, um, it might surprise you, I'm looking for some clarification here. I think I heard that Alderdorf, as chair of finance, would like us to suggest that as a council, we'd probably be comfortable with a certain level. But then also I heard that you were asked, will you have your input? And you will, of course. And so can we do it in that order, is that okay? I would really love to hear what some of my other colleagues have to say. I appreciate what Alder Burnett had to say, and I, I wish that I could hear from some more. Yeah. Alder John, did I? No, Alder Scano. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just first, I think bringing up the federal debt is out of order and completely off point. The federal debt is nothing compared to, I mean, the circumstances they're just not comparable. They're not equatable, what we have to deal with and what the federal government has to deal with. They can make money. They're not in the situation we're in. It's not relevant. I don't see how that's helpful at all. And secondly, I would just like us to keep in mind, speaking of the federal government, they did pass an infrastructure bill, finally. Been waiting for a number of years for that. So I would uh, recommend that we kind of tread water a little bit till we find out what uh, what's all doable with that money. We'll be having some more money coming down the road for infrastructure. So uh, I, I don't agree with going down to eight million. I think uh, 15 is a reasonable uh, number, a target. Um, so I would recommend that and just to uh, remind everybody, you know, the, we are gonna get some infrastructure money. I would, I'm not sure, it should be coming fairly soon. They passed it a while ago. So uh, let's be a little careful, but uh, Let's not be crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I think the those are good comments just in terms of where things stand with the, the infrastructure bill. Um, Build.gov was just published within the last couple days that gives some oh. guidance to states and municipalities. And um, we will be having a meeting with, with the Secretary of Transportation, um, his office at the state level, before the next finance meeting, just to try to get a little bit more sense for what the city might receive. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, and, and uh, certainly Chief Litton and Director Grenier, if you could answer this question. This body uh, has previously authorized already uh, several transactions that need to be part of the bond request. Uh, can you confirm what those amounts were? Director well, Johnson, from uh, the fire department's perspective, um, 
<clears throat> there are two, uh, um, one that's on order and one that you advanced already. Do you recall Ellen what the Victor? amount was, Chief Litton? Uh, approximately one point um, three seven five, something like that. One point three million dollars. Director Alan Becker, do you have those those figures as, as well to confirm? Or? DP, DPWs is one three seven five as well. Okay, so and, and again, I think those are just close enough for my point, uh, which is. I'm a reasonable person too, and I think eight million is going to be darn near impossible if, in fact, we we do want public works to do any roads uh, this year. And so, I, I'll admit I'm not sure. Twelve million, fifteen million. I I think we need to be somewhere in there. Um, I I do think the nineteen uh, five is too high. Uh, you know, several years ago I had asked the the question when I was a member of Improvement and Services Committee if there were trade publications that were put out that could predict the cost of materials. And while I don't think any of them could, could forecast the impact that COVID would have on materials, um, as, as Director Grenier has alluded to, um, the price of materials is skyrocketing right now. And so we're trying to do more roads at a time when the prices are higher than we've seen in recent memory. And that, that's not a great formula for having impact. Um, so I, I think we've got to engage in that dialogue a little bit as well at Finance Committee. Um, and again, I, without a crystal ball, it's going to be really difficult, but uh, we've got some work ahead of us. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't have a magic number to offer you, sorry, but I'll, I'll definitely be there and listening in and can weigh in. Um, I, w I would su certainly suggest, I think we still have some Oneida agreement money, maybe not much, two, 300,000, something like that, you know, perhaps use that. And then the ARPA funds, we have the $10 million bucket and the $3 million bucket that we can use for some projects. So that's $13 million. Uh, I would maximize those as much as we can. I mean, they're meant for one-time purchases and we certainly have a lot of those right now. So, and hopefully we can get some answers from our big brother. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Any others? We got a motion and a second to receive Mayor. a press on file. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know if I have a magic number either. I did sit through finance for the three and a half hour meeting and uh, a lot of good discussion. Um, I, I've been harping over the over the years to look at better efficiencies because it, it, it has been mentioned by an alder or two of, of waste. And I know some of the department heads might say, well, we don't have that much waste. But I think there there are areas that we could shore up. I mean, I had talked about and I know people have pushed back on it, uh, some of the departments, but combining garages, for example, uh, selling some city properties, uh, uh, not jobbing uh, repairs out. You know, I, I've talked to a number of folks behind the scenes and we're jobbing stuff out that we could probably do in house. So how much will that save us? I'm not sure, but I'm willing to look at that. And I, I really think that we got to look at efficiencies you know, not just bonding and adding and adding. We need to look at efficiencies, and that's something I'll, I'll peek at. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Thanks, Alder. All right, all in favor of the motion to receive and place on file, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes have it, and that report has been dispensed with. Personnel. Motion approved. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Any items here to be handled separately? Alder Burnett? Number one, sorry. Number one. Two. All right, doing them both. So we will just move to item one. Um, motion there. To approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Alder Burnett? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I support the motion, okay? I feel a captain of police department, very important, electrical inspector, you know, important, I suppose. Um, well, it's important, but, you know, when I say suppose, I don't know if other staff members could do the work or, you know, we could work in other ways of <clears throat> filling that service. The reason I pull this is that when we talk about the financial con condition of the city, bonding, how much should we borrow, how much should we cut, one thing that, that we could do, you know, moving forward just to kind of bridge this gap to make our 
you know, city financial position favorable at year end that kind of make room for an additional levy next year for debt borrowing is not fill some of these positions. You know, obviously there are critical positions that need to be filled. Police, public works, fire, they're, all of our positions are important. Every department head will advocate for some positions. But when I say um, not fill a position, I'm simply saying positions that leave the city, maybe, maybe we delay the hiring a little bit, six months, th you know, three months, nine months, or maybe wait the next budget year. We are still in a position uh, due to COVID where we have a lot of department, <coughs> department employees working from home through our remote work policy. I think that there are some possibilities that less people, less citizens, less phone calls are coming into City Hall. I'm not saying these positions aren't important, that we should never fill them, but you know, maybe we ask our department heads to really look a little deeper at how they can redistribute some of the work so the city can save some money on not filling positions until a little bit later than we ideally would like to. So that's all. I support the motion, but I'm going to look a little closer at some of these future positions moving forward to determine if some positions can be held a little longer considering we're still de dealing with COVID and perhaps reduce demand at City Hall for some of those professional services. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any others? Got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved. Item two. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, second by Alder Dorf. That was pulled by Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to make a motion right away to receive and place on file. Motion has been made to receive and place on file by Alder Weary. Second. Seconded by Alder Brunette. And then under discussion. I don't see this as a problem that's something we need to address. I, I just have not. When have we taken a department head and thrown them to the curb on a willy-nilly notion? We haven't because it takes a majority of the council. Now, do we hold them accountable? Yes, that's our job. So what this would do is shift that from us being able to hold them accountable every two years, and we are the citizenry. So we're taking that away from the citizens and putting it solely into the mayor's office. Their job would become much, much more difficult to try and remove them from that position. So instead of perhaps trying to uh, not only help us and the mayor, you'd see it shift more towards really just helping one office. And it's meant to help all of us. I haven't heard a good argument of why this needs to change. Oh no, we might put some people through the, you know, through a little bit of a rough review maybe when it comes to appointment time. Oh no, not that. I haven't heard that we have a problem getting applicants. And you know why? Because we have pretty good department heads. Some of them are really great. So that tells me we've gotten good applicants and we have good department heads. So again, it's not needed. We're, we're, we're clipping our own wings. Why would we do that to ourselves? I it still boggles my mind. Why would we just voluntarily hand over the hand over that ability? Just odd, strange. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Other comments on the motion to receive and place on file? Alder Galvin, then Alder Gerlach, then Alder Dorf. Thank you, Your Honor. I've heard this. Uh, referred to as giving up our power. I've just never understood the ability of the council. Why would the council want to remove someone from their position for no reason? We let a person walk into a meeting on a Tuesday night, and if that person has maybe not resurfaced enough roads in that council person's uh, district, Here's the time to get even with them. Doesn't have to explain why they're voting them out of office, but there you go. Um, we didn't like the way the police chief, or no, I'm sorry, I take that back. He's, he falls under police and fire. But any other department head doesn't do what a council person wants. Here's their opportunity to take a shot at them. Even if they're not removed from office, they're, they're being put up as if they've done something wrong. No rhyme, no reason, no explanation, no recourse, boom. And if we were to get enough council members together, we could potentially remove someone from their job for no reason, no reason at all. 
Has it ever happened? No. Could it happen? Absolutely. That's why it's there, to remove them for no reason. I believe in due process. That's what this country is based on. Everything is due process. For a council member to be removed from office by a method other than the voters, it's due process, and we've seen that happen here. I can't see why we would want to keep this power so that we can go after department heads and make them tremble because they're not doing what we want. I don't think that's right. I've said it before. I don't think it's American. And I think it's embarrassing to want to keep doing it that way. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Gerlach? I just wanted to uh, make sure that everybody saw this um, study that I think it was uh, Chief Falds provided for us. Um, research, I think he was asked to do this, find out about other municipalities and, and how many of them um, have the same kind of um, uh, process that we have. And I can't see any that do. Um, only Green Bay has a two-year term. And this is my concern. Um, I agree with what Alder Galvin just said. Just because we can't say, oh, I remember the time when we lost so-and-so because he went to Appleton because he could stay for indefinitely. Just because we can't identify that doesn't mean it hasn't happened or that it won't happen. And we don't know if we're getting a lot of applications. We don't know that. We just know how many we're getting. Um, any one of our very experienced and trained and skilled directors or, or deputy directors could go to find a job very easily. They can just go to Manitowoc. And they won't have to face this two-year option of, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, possibly might be let go in two years. I've been in the workforce since I was 11 years old. And I never had a, an offer like that. I, I can't imagine signing a teaching contract. And they'll say, well, you know, we'll think about it again in two years. They wanted somebody that would stay as long as they, as they would produce and do well and flourish. I just think it's, it um, doesn't make any sense not to change this to indefinite. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Mayor. I was going to reference the chart, but um, Elder Gerlach beat me to it. But I think that it's important that everyone look at that chart and, and see that there are cities on that chart, like Appleton um, and Eau Claire and Fond du Lac and Kenosha, La Crosse, Manitowoc, Oshkosh, Racine, Sheboygan, Waukesha, and Wausau. Indefinite terms. Green Bay, two years. We are no doubt losing good applicants that would not want to come into a situation like this. Alders are voting, alders that get elected, I believe it's at our first meeting, is that correct, Mayor? At the so. first meeting. So you can walk on as an alder, it's your first meeting, you haven't worked at all with any of the department chairs at all, and you're being asked to prove whether they get to keep their job. That's, that is not American, as Alder Galvin said. That is not right. Due process is the right way to do this. This doesn't mean that a person could do a, a poor job and continue on. No, because people can be removed for cause. And for cause means that they've done something inappropriate, wrong, um, unethical, immoral, whatever, illegal. So for cause, they can be removed, but not just at the whim of alders. And I've seen it happen in my tenure on council where an alder will pop up with a name out of the blue and say, I want, I move that we don't reappoint the clerk, for example. Comes out of the blue, nobody's expecting it. How do you think it makes that employee feel? That is not how we want to treat the employees that we have. I am absolutely voting against receive on, and place on file. And when that fails, as is my hope, then I will make a motion to approve. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary first. Alder Johnson, then Alder Weary for a second time. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, one of the, I've been thinking about this issue a lot. Um, and of course, you know, the topic of due process has come up and, um, you know, what's interesting right now is in our current format, due process is not afforded in either branch of government, the executive branch or city council, because in, in both instances, of course, if the majority of council votes right now to not approve or reappoint 
uh, a director. Um, it, it just is. There's, there's no process involved there. Um, and obviously the executive, the mayor, uh, is allowed to remove anybody right now because it is an at-will employment. Um, you know, one thing, though, however, that I've given a lot of contemplation to is this notion that, you know, council needs to somehow retain some level of authority over that. And I, I thought about the federal government. Obviously, when you appoint federal cabinets, it's a one-time vote. Uh, I thought about state government. When you appoint your cabinet secretaries, it's a one-time vote. Council does not completely lose its authority um, in, in this process. We still can remove someone with three quarters. And really, right now, we can do that, obviously, every two years with seven votes. Uh, what changes ultimately is that we go to the necessity uh, to remove someone for nine votes. Um, but one, so, so as it stands right now, it, I'm opposed to the motion, and if a new one is made, uh, if it fails, I, I would support that. Um, you know, but one thing that I would simply request, and I, I'm going to contemplate whether or not this should require a future communication, but if in fact these individuals are going to be uh, appointed through the mayor's office and council is losing its ability to have a simple majority to remove someone for non-performance or, or otherwise, it would be nice to have more engagement from the council on the front end. So when you, when you think about search and screen committees that oftentimes you see at the university level or, or other organizations, I think having more council representation, more council input on the front end, I think would be a good thing uh, for our city and for our city government. Um, so, you know, maybe there's, there's a modification that can be made to that process. But I do agree that right now having to put department heads on trial every two years is not a healthy environment. Um, I don't think that it's been an inhibitor in terms of recruiting candidates before because I don't think anybody knew this existed or would expect that it existed. And clearly now we're having a very public discussion about it. And, and I, my, my worry would be that it becomes an issue moving forward. So, um, so I think right now, I think that's where I stand on the, on, on the motion and perhaps subsequent motion. But more importantly, I would just like to really emphasize that I think we need to find a way to have more council engagement in that hiring process. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Just on that point, just so all, all of council is aware, the last three appointed officials <laughs> that I've appointed, we have had Alders involved and Alder involved in the interview process. Um, so I think it's, it's a good, good idea. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it was previously stated by an alder that the scenario hadn't even happened where department head was, was not reappointed. But we're going to try and guess that it might. And I'm wondering, there must be more to this, something deeper than just wanting to change that. But who knows what that might be. Um, unfair process. Uh, there's a flaw in the logic. If it's an unfair process, that somebody can just be let go for any reason, then why does the mayor still retain that if that's an unfair process? It should be good for both. Right now, at least they get a jury of 12. Then it'll just be a jury of one. The mayor's tired of you, you're gone. At least with the council, you've got to, you know, you gotta have seven of 12, which is rare to do on a lot of, a lot of times we wanna, agree on something, especially the removal of someone. That's why it hasn't happened. So just think long and hard before we change it. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Point of clarification, I believe the mayor's always had that ability. Um, just as uh, the superintendent of, of schools has the ability to Alder remove Alder, an, an administrator. You don't have the floor. Yeah, I have the floor. Excuse me, I have the floor. Excuse me, excuse me. I have the floor. Um, Alder Dorf has the floor. Yeah, that th be, being an at-will employee is similar to being a uh, school principal, a school administrator. It, you, are, you serve at the will of, of the superintendent and the school board, um, but at the superintendent, you can be removed by the superintendent. Then uh, the mayor, in my understanding, does have the authority and has always had the authority for at-will employees to be removed and due process still is given to them. Even if it's an at-will dismissal, there must be some due process that's given. It's not just for no reason. 
there is due process that's given. We don't even have due process if the council is removing someone. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell, then Alder Burnett. Yes, just real quick. I, I don't see it as giving up any kind of power. I can't imagine anything that the council would do that uh, if, if a director needs to be removed wouldn't happen through the natural process. I don't see how we're, uh, the council um, has any role in this that's positive. Uh, any director that needs to be removed that the council would want to remove would happen through a natural process anyway. So I, I see no reason why we should be included in this. I don't think uh, it's wise to include us in this. It's just not, we're part-time employees. We've got a lot of different backgrounds. I think you leave this to the HR, you leave this to the mayor, who's a full-time employee, the executive. Um, we, our role comes in, I think, as Alder Johnson mentioned, at the front end with the hiring and with the uh, approval of the first hire. So uh, as far as reappointments of directors, I just don't see it practical. I don't see anything but pernicious outcomes in pursuing it and that it's not necessary. Any director that needs to be removed that the council would want to move would be moved through natural processes. So I, I see no problem with this at all. Thank you. That's Alder, Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. I just don't, I mean, both sides seem to be giving kind of extreme scenarios, but I really see no compelling reason to change what we have already always been doing, and it seemed to be working fine. It's ironic because on one hand we're saying that it's going to limit the quality of department heads that we're getting to hire, but then on the other hand we're saying that all of the department heads are performing well, which I happen to agree, agree with. So if, if we're having a hard time finding candidates, how did we get the group that we currently have? It just seems counterintuitive. It's like trying to argue a, a different position using a different, it just seems strange. We'll remind everyone that the department heads in our city of Green Bay carry substantial responsibilities and duties. We're running our elections, in charge of human resources, public works, of course, police and fire, uh, uh, you know, captains are hired by the police and fire commission. But all those administrative positions, city attorney, finance, they're all, and parks, you name it, they all carry substantial responsibilities and they and the positions get compensated for that level of competence that they bring to the position all of these department heads make well over a hundred thousand dollars and so for me if we're going to justify spending that much for top talent then we need to make sure that the talent is accountable to all the people and through the elected representatives of their city government who every two years has to go door to door in their campaign and hear from a public a public that could say things are going great no problem everything's okay and of course we would have no reason to not you know fulfill a position or, or for uh, an, appoint, uh, an appointed position at that time but if we're going door to door and we're saying my gosh roads are horrible and I'm just using an example roads are horrible what happened with this election what a scandal what a shame all these things that the public hears about we hear from the public and then each council having just been elected from hearing all of that feedback can say, you know what, maybe the public's onto something. This is an opportunity to remove a department head. I think that we're being a little disingenuous when we say that this will be a public process. This would be behind closed session. Whenever we have dealt with personnel issues, it has been behind closed doors. The only thing, and I think some of you might be kind of having a flashback to this moment, but when we started Zoom, there was a real unfortunate situation where we had this discussion nearly two years ago, and it was public because of a technology issue. So we, we had some things aired publicly that we wish would not have been aired publicly, and hopefully we've all moved on from that. I just don't see a reason why this is an issue. Uh, we've attracted really good employees. It holds them accountable, not just to you know, handful of council members, but all council members. And we've never done it. I mean, that that I remember, I don't think we've ever not appointed, that I've been in office. I mean, Alderman, where you mentioned something a lot at the last meeting that happened once. 
but we're just kind of coming up with all these scenarios of if it happened or it's going to happen we got to trust the public and that they elect council members that are mature professional responsible that they, they don't hold grudges and this and that i don't agree with everything that the department heads tell me i have disagreements on things i've just had a disagreement with the city attorney but i wouldn't hold a grudge against her and, and not appoint her to another two-year terms based on a simple disagreement let's be real we're mature people and all council members hopefully if they get elected moving forward will carry that same decorum that this current council carries so I, i'm i'm in favor of the motion i, I just don't see compelling reason to differ what we have always done thank you thanks Alder. so we do have a motion to receive and place on file it's been seconded use the board, please. we will use the board thank you alders you may vote excuse me mayor i'm reading this here trying to is this the hold this is to receive and place on file. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Here's your play vote. Can you see, sorry, here it is. Thank you, sorry, but I clicked it. So that fails eight to four. Move to approve. Motion, motion to approve made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those nay. No. The ayes have it. nay. Public Arts Commission. Motion to approve the report of the Public Arts Commission made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any discussion? none all in favor of signify by saying aye 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 the ayes have it traffic bicycle and pedestrian commission motion to approve made by alder scannell seconded by alder stevens any items here to be handled separately none all in favor of approving that report signify by saying aye 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 Opposed, nay. the ayes have it the report has been approved sustainability motion to approve made by alder scannell Second. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. Um, there has been a request to speak. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and this is probably more of a question. I don't know which uh, Alder sits on this committee. If it's okay, Alder Scano. I It might be helpful, and this is a good matrix and, and, and a good working document. But I, I do think every decision has to have some cost implications kind of clearly spelled out. You know, basic services have to be met before we start exploring and expanding new concepts. So maybe look into having a, you know, an extra column, you know, economic impact or cost or city budget implication. That way you know maybe we don't want to go down this path because it's pretty costly. Maybe we can hit some of these lower fruits. So I just, just an idea to put that out there because um, when it comes around, obviously we're going to have to look at cost, but it's good to look at it up front, I think. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scano. Well, we could, you know, kind of take a look at that, but I, quite frankly, I don't know that we would know the costs up front. I mean, but a lot of these are goals that are going to be five years down the road, ten years down the road. Who knows what the costs are going to be? I mean, uh, I'll bring it up that, you know, if we can um, have some kind of ballpark figure or some kind of idea um, that, yeah, that could be included, certainly. But uh, I think it's going to be pretty tough. But to actually doing some of these though we'll have a better idea we just saw tonight you know what the extra cost would be to do a project like that so it's good to know you know it's nice to talk about things in theory but then when you start talking numbers maybe it's not as cool so well, thanks most of these items will eventually go to a committee and that's when i think your numbers right. are really going to start popping I just wanted to get yep. that that yep. idea you know circulated. Yep, yep i'll certainly bring it up all right thank, thank you, you. Good. So we have a motion and a second all in favor signify by saying aye 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 Opposed nay the ayes have it the report has been approved equal rights Motion to approve. First. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Alder Burnett. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, it's one agenda item. I think it was something about housing, if I'm not mistaken, but there were some other, couple of points I want to make about this meeting. A uh, couple other, uh, it's related, but uh, Director Faults, the question is directed towards you. Watch the minutes, and, and the commissioners kind of had an interesting idea 
idea that I'm not opposed necessarily, but I want a little more clarification. Uh, the members of the committee who, you know, represent uh, perhaps a certain segment of our community, a certain demographic group that could kind of be a voice for those people in the community. Uh, they, one of the members, one of the commissioners had an interesting idea that there would be a picture of the commissioners on the city's website so people can say okay this person is on the equal rights commission i can kind of reach out to them with questions uh, uh, director falls you kind of said that you would look into that or perhaps you were looking into that my, my my question and i just want to make sure we're being very consistent it's good that we have that if we do do that for equal rights commission couple thoughts one i want to make sure that the public knows that they are appointed members of that that any decision any directive that any board but that board makes would be contingent on the approval of council but then also secondly that if we're gonna uh, do that for this committee then we should really think about it doing it for all so we're consistent and just a real quick the boards and commissions um, there's ethics board there's housing authority transit commission you know all the uh, traffic bicycle pedestrians we need to have a real you know good policy discussion one if that's appropriate because there are some committees where that definitely is not appropriate board of review for example if we had the citizens reaching out to appointed members and trying to kind of convince a person to vote one way or the other on a project redevelopment authority same thing so i know i'm kind of rambling with my question but director faults can you kind of give a little insight on that is that something that's being considered or would you kind of propose something to council so we can talk about it as a policy discussion well i guess it's up to the council policy decision um, i think most of the people appointed on commissions are you know public or out facing like it goes to the common council we know who the person is that's appointed i think the point of the equal rights commission discussion was they want to make sure that people know publicly that there is an equal rights commission and that they're accessible and i think with the website we want to provide you know, information and educate the public on what each board and commission is doing. I think we're trying to do that with all of our commissions. So, I, I mean, it could be up to the commission how much information they want to disclose. And I think we obviously want to have the general information on what commissions do and what um, what actions that they take for the council or for the, for the city. And then when it comes to providing pictures or contact information, again, that's probably up to the commissioner and how comfortable they feel. So. I, I don't know if you need to have a general policy for that, but I do think the intent of the Equal Rights Commission was we're here to serve the community. We want to get our, our people are aware of who's on the, the commission and educate the, the community on what the services they provide. That's what I think the intent was. Yeah, and I appreciate. And again, I, I think it's a it's a it's an idea worth considering. I think I, I commend that person for bringing that forward. It's something that I hadn't really considered. I just want to make sure we're being consistent and that we kind of you know can, can, you know think of all things including safety you know advocacy what's appropriate if they're commissioners are they taking a position uh, for the city of green bay in their role and i think sometimes these commissions if they're not properly not just this commission but other boards if they're not kind of like told on the front end this is your role kind of like what council members do if i go to the media and say the city of green bay this the city of green bay that i have to very clearly through our code of conduct say my view represents one of 12 council members. This is not an official position of the city. So I'll, I'll just trust you, Director Folds, that you kind of hear you know, to the heart of what I'm saying, that I, I'm not opposed to the idea. I just want a little consideration into all the factors related. Uh, the, other the other point that I want to make, and this is re directly re in regards to housing. I think we all know that we have a housing crisis in the city of Green Bay. There's not a a lot of available units, and if there is an available unit, the, the cost seems to be rather high. In fact, Fox 11 just posted something that caught my eye, and it said that according to Zumper, which I'm not sure what that is, I'm sure it's a legitimate media source, but according to Zumper, the average rent for a one bedroom in Green Bay is $7.95. So one good thing that the Equal Rights Commission is doing is they wanna have a community conversation about housing, different people, and how they're affected by housing. One thing that I wanna make sure we're very cognizant of as a city is that we engage the landlord community in a positive manner. Sometimes a lot of ire and frustration could be directed towards landlords, like uh, landlords need to do this or landlords need to do that. And I think that's true in a lot of cases, but some of our landlords are barely getting by. We had a pandemic 
crisis where a lot of landlords were not getting paid for well over a year in rent. And they're using this opportunity to kind of get caught up on business losses that they have absorbed in other ways. So it is true that rent is going up and hopefully as a community through ARPA and other tactics, we can find affordable housing but we have to be very careful in our public messaging through the Equal Rights Commission that we'll hear a multiple, multitude of opinions and when landlords come up to us and give their opinion on the, the business aspects of what they do, that we hear them as well. So, and again, I'm, I'm, as a professional courtesy, I'm, I'm sure that commission would do that. I just want that stated. Landlords are hurting right now and it's not that they're making a fortune and pocketing it. Some of these landlords are facing real tough decisions, you know, fixing units, the rising cost of paint and lumber to repair things. It's tough out there in a lot of ways. That's all. So I'm in support of the motion to receive in place on file or whatever the motion was. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, approve Alder yes. Sawyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> kind of piggybacking a little on what all the Burnett said. I mean, as far as the housing the subcommittee that I was actually a part of, and I'm still doing research with them, but the county is looking at affordable housing and is really leaning on the landlord tenant uh, relationships. So if you guys about that, any of the alders, I would, I would suggest you talk to a director, uh, assistant director, Renier Wig about that. So I think there are some things that are going on as well. Uh, just as an aside, you know, with all these committees and all the requests to have uh, transparency, I agree with that. Um, maybe I'm missing something, but for example, I'm on the Landmarks Commission and I rarely, if ever, see any anything in uh, council about that. And there may be other committees that are being left behind as well. I know we look at standing committees, but there are quite a few that aren't standing committees that we don't have any information on, or at least we have to dig further. So I think it's very important that we look at every committee that, you know, at least to have a report out on them. So I don't know if that needs a communication or if that's just something uh, Director Falls that you can look at. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you about that, but uh, maybe it's just a matter of just tweaking it a little bit. So that's my, that's my point. We have a motion and a second. A motion to approve the report of the Equal Rights Commission. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Committee of the Whole. Motion so, to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Uh, we have a question from Alder Dorf. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're approving the list of unavailable election inspectors, poll workers, nominated by the Democratic and Republican parties of Brown County. I have a question for the clerk. Um, clerk Jeffries, how do you know that they are unavailable or that they don't want to be poll workers? Thank you very much, Alder, for asking that question. Um, so <clears throat> we know this because when we get the list from the parties lists we then reach out to these individuals and say hey you know you've been nominated by your party um, to serve as a poll worker uh, so um, would you like to serve as a poll worker and some of the people the people who you have before you tonight uh, had written back to us and said no they did not want to serve and so the process for a party nominated poll worker or election inspector is for the county first notified, be notified and then approve that list. And then for me to provide that list to the Wisconsin Elections Commission. So we know this because we have this information, you know, a lot of times uh, via a phone call, but then also in writing. Thank you. And, and, and I also, um, I did notice that there were fairly equal numbers of Republican and Democrat um, people that on this list that decided that they didn't want to be poll workers. Are there any next steps that you take at this point or are, are you done now with this? Yes, thank you. So tonight um, I would ask your approval of this list and then I will need to direct this list to the Wisconsin Elections Commission with the document. Thank you. All right, thanks for that clarification, Alder. Any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Resolutions. We can suspend the rules. 
Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up these items for the <coughs> call vote. Uh, that was seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Motion to adopt, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin, and we will use the board. <coughs> Thank you, Alders. You may vote. Yes, thank you. Those are adopted 12 0. Ordinance is first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Let his motion read. Motion has been made to take items one and two up with one roll call vote. That was made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Motion to advance. advance. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Those items are advanced. Item three. Motion to advance number three. Second. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Request has been made to use the board. Thank you. Just give me one moment. And this is a motion to advance. Item three. Thank you, Alders. You may vote. And Mr. Vanderleest? Thank you. Here is your vote. And that item is advanced eight to four petitions and communications. Alder Burnett. I submitted it to Clerk Jeffries uh, earlier, but I want it to be read so the public's aware. Uh, to use all, that's to Finance Committee, to use all unbudgeted, un, unspent 2021 revenue from the Cooperative Governance Agreement with the Oneida Nation on items found in the 2022 Capital Improvement Plan, as opposed to the suggested rebranding initiative. The rebranding initiative should then be considered during the 2023 city budget process if it is worth pursuing. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none, and we don't need a motion to refer because you've already submitted that, Alder? Uh, Clerk Jeffries, is that everything's a okay? Yes, everything is in order. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn it. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everyone.